Welcome to the house that Bud built. Where Barry made his mark. Where Bob continues to roll. Welcome to the home where Superman lives. and 42 All-American. Forty-seven game winning streak. Forty conference titles. Counting seven national championships. There's only one. Only one. 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 Oklahoma. This is Oklahoma football. Campus of the University of Oklahoma, a quiet scene throughout the week, not unlike most universities around the country, but watch out come game day. The Sooner fans know how to party and how to get ready to watch their third ranked team. Welcome to College Football Saturday from Oklahoma's Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium. Today, the number three ranked Sooners of Oklahoma face the Aggies of Utah State. Welcome everyone, Bill Land along with Dean Blevins. Glad to have you with us here today. The Sooners ranked number three, two and oh. A couple of blowouts, Dean. Hard not to get on their bandwagon. They're playing mighty strong. Well, I think, Bill, after the Boise State stunning loss in the bowl game, people were wanting to get that out of their systems and to move forward. And Bob Stoops is so optimistic about clubs. He was really excited about this one, and the people could feel it if the quarterback was going to come through. Well, that if was answered in week one, and then with a resounding yes in week two with the win over Miami. Sam Bradford sensation. Well, look at these numbers here. 40 of 48, so he's had eight incompletions. Far right, he's had eight touchdowns and no interceptions. He's far exceeded anyone's expectations. Bill, he's a, a natural leader. He's a terrific athlete. He's been very, very accurate with the football. He has all the weapons in front of him, specifically in front of him, the offensive line. But here you look at Malcolm Kelly, who can do that, and then he can do this as well. And that tandem is pretty mean. And not only does he have Kelly, he has a host of receivers to go to with different abilities. Joaquin Iglesias might be a little bit underappreciated. He's a possession receiver. Gresham is only 6'6 six, six and 266 pounds. And Malcolm Kelly is as good a receiver as there is in America. All right, that's the throwing and catching game. How about the running game? They got a bevy of backs. No Adrian Peterson, but a guy by the name of DeMarco Murray, a youngster, has got people just buzzing around here. Well, he might be the third on the depth chart right now, but that doesn't mean that he's not the guy that has people more excited than anyone because he is really more of a sprinter. He's a guy who came in highly touted, and he's a guy who is a home run threat, which fans love. Utah State, the opponent, 0-2, a little deceiving. They led both games in the fourth quarter. They have a quarterback who literally does it all in Leon Jackson the third. Well, Leon Jackson's a guy that uh, can do a little bit of everything. A lefty there. Here you see his number's not bad at all. He can punt it as well. But he has to lead this club. He's put too much on his shoulders. And in a game like this, he cannot do that. And they got a guy in the backfield, Curtis Marsh, a dual threat. Yeah, he can run it, he can catch it. He's going against the defense, though, that has allowed only one yard per rush. Yeah, tough day here for the Aggies when you talk about that Oklahoma defense and with more on the Sooners' D. Here's Emily Jones. Well, guys, Utah State is averaging 115 yards per game on the ground through two games this season, but rushing yards will not be easy to come by against this Oklahoma defense, which comes into this game ranked sixth in the country in that category. Thanks in large part to the OU linebacking core, the Sooners are giving up just 33 and a half rushing yards per game. The threesome of Lewis Baker, Curtis Lofton, and Ryan Reynolds have accounted for 38 tackles, six of which have been for a loss and one sack. 
And in the middle of it all is the junior loft, and he's got 16 tackles of his own, 10 of which are solo. The OU defense looking to continue its dominance today and run the Sooners' record to a perfect 3-0 on the young season against a Utah State Aggies team that's still looking for the win column in 2007. It's a beautiful day for football here in Norman, Oklahoma. We've got the kickoff between the third-ranked Sooners and the Utah State Aggies when we come back. The Oklahoma Sooners taking the field here at Memorial Stadium. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, Emily Jones with you as the Sooners rank number three in the nation. An impressive 2-0 with convincing wins over Miami last week, 51-13, and a throttling of North Texas in the opener, 79-10. The Aggies of Utah State at 0-2, losing to Wyoming 32-18. They led in the fourth quarter, 18-17, though, and they fell in their opener to Nevada, Las Vegas, UNLV, beating the Aggies 23-16, another game that the Ags led in the fourth quarter but could not hang on. Glad to have you with us here on just an absolute picture-perfect day for football. Utah State has won the toss, choosing to receive, and Oklahoma will defend the south goal, and Utah State... It's got to be a little concerned, Dean, coming in here as Bob Stoops got his club ready. Bob Stoops got to be a little concerned with such a big win last week. Is everybody up and ready to go this week? Well, I mean, they've been a good staff in terms of getting people up or keeping them on the same level. He likes to say even keel. But, you know, emotions are going to vary week to week. It, it, you never are going to, to play at that same level of emotion. And this would certainly be the game that you would dip. The opener, you want to be out there to prove what you can do. And then the second game, huge against Miami. And a guy that Oklahoma folks are familiar with, Brent Guy, who played at Oklahoma State, assistant coach there in two different stops. His third year at Utah State, 4-1. A difficult job. No one is uh, disagreeing with that. Thinks he's making progress, even though it's not shown by the one-loss ledger after going 3-8 and eight in his opening year, 1-11 last year. But his team statistically is light years ahead of where they've been. Well, and the people around that program see, say that despite the fact they're 0-2, of course, they did lead going into those four quarters, so they could have done better than the 0-2, but there's more optimism and excitement surrounding the program. Well, as Hartley gets ready to tee it up here, Garrett is off to a terrific start, and he grows a candidate as far as awards for kickers. Utah State will have deep number six, who is an outstanding performer and a veteran receiver as well as kick returner, and Aaron Lesway, one of their tailbacks, number one, also deep. And Hartlett, they'll bring it out. And tackled shy of the 20-yard line is Aaron Lesway, the senior from Fallon, Nevada. And Utah State will operate first and 10, just shy of the 20-yard line. The Yankees with their quarterback, Leon Jackson III, leading them out. He's a senior from Long Beach Poly. He's completing passes at a rate of 68% for 284 yards. Here's a look at his background, his 17th career start. He is third all-time in completion percentage at Utah State at 56%. They run a ball-control type offense with offensive coordinator Daryl Dickey, formerly the North Texas head coach. This one is out on the flat and complete to Robinson. He is stopped near the 23-yard line by Marcus Walker, the corner for the University of Oklahoma. 77 degrees, wind out of the south at four today as we take a look at the offensive line. Sean Murphy, the son of the baseball great Dale Murphy. They've got size. Hoke is 6'9", and Jorgensen is 335 pounds. The backs and the receivers, we told you a little bit about this way, and Robinson, Atkinson, Nelson, and Fausel, the other uh, big playmaker as far as a tight end in the blocking formation. But second down and seven. The ball at the 22 of the Aggies of Utah State. Robinson, the man in motion. And the carry, not much doing, maybe back to the line of scrimmage as Ryan Reynolds was there to meet the ball carry. Ryan Reynolds, we talked about DeMarco Murray off the top. Here you see the Oklahoma defense, Bill. 
And uh, these guys, are they're good, they're strong, they're deep. English, Bennett, McCoy, and the crew. You got Baker, Lofton, Ryan Reynolds, who just made that play, has been outstanding. And the secondary, many think as good as any in the country. Reggie Smith returned a fumble for a score last week. Third and seven for Utah State. And again, complete to Robinson. He is stopped at the 23. And a punting situation, which means that quarterback Jackson will also kick off and Reynolds made the stop. But what I was going to mention about Ryan Reynolds, despite the fact that he's from Las Vegas, where DeMarco Murray is, they came in together. Uh, but, but the other thing is that this is a club that tackles extremely well. You probably saw Marcus Walker break down, great tackle in the first play. Second play, Ryan Reynolds, and there the other linebacker, number 40, Lofton. And that's why they are able to stop people on a lot of third and Third down conversions. It's third, fourth and sixth here. Jackson averaging 47 yards a kick among the national leaders. He gets a favorable roll as the deep man Reggie Smith stays away from it. And Oklahoma wins the first battle of field position as they'll get the football for the first time at the 35 yard line of OU. And leading him out, redshirt freshman Sam Bradford after a 42 yard punt will have him take over first and 10 at the 35 and his numbers are just absolutely mind-boggling the first week he was 21 of 23 that led him to that number there at the bottom about leading the nation in passing efficiency because last week against miami he was 19 of 25 and it's first and 10 at the 35 for the sooners play action and bradford rolls out kelly on the sideline got it just shy of the first down, a pickup of nine, it appears, as we'll take a look at the rest of that Oklahoma offensive unit. The offensive line has been so solid, and you talk about size, load hold at 6'8", 350 pounds. Robinson, Cooper's had an outstanding start. Walker, Trent Williams, and the backs and receivers. Alan Patrick got back last week to work. We've seen a lot already in our pregame comments about some of those wideouts. And here's Kelly, stiff arms the defender, got the first down as he makes it to midfield. He was shaking off Marquise Charles, the corner for the Aggies. That's gonna mess the, the numbers up of uh, Kelly. You know, he's caught yeah. eight balls and five for touchdowns. So. Well, only 27 and a half yards per catch. He's yeah. probably going, wait, wait a minute, that, yeah. that messes everything up. The numbers are just absolutely amazing as Kelly tied for the NCAA lead with touchdown scored. And as Steve mentioned, five TDs on only eight receptions. Now nine. We'll make it uh, 10, I guess, for the first two here. Confusion, timeout, wasted. Brandon Braxton, 76, playing right tackle. We'll take a brief break as well. As Bob Stoops will talk it over with his troops. No score, just underway. No score, Oklahoma's first possession. We'll take a look at the Utah State defense that comes in allowing 27 and a half points per contest. The Aggies, last year giving up 38, a much improved bunch. Calderwood is their leader. He was a number two all-conference pick last year in the WAC. Take a look at the backers there, Hall among their best. And here is Oklahoma, again, lining it up Iglesias with the reception, and he takes it to the Utah State 35-yard line, and Davon Hall made the tackle. Adrian Tunnell with a terrific block out front. That's been the thing that the Oklahoma receivers have done a great job of this year. You might see it right in front of you. Good block, mostly getting in the way, but still the defender completely out of the way. And a quick look at the secondary for the Aggies. Murphy, Brindley, Taylor, and Taylor. And yes, they are twins. Replay, flag is thrown. And the Sooners trying to take advantage of it. Iglesias to the 10. He strolls into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. We'll check the flag. <laughs> so it stands, and Utah State's worst nightmare comes true. Well, you know, most of the time when you have a, an offside on the opponent, you have a free play, and you think a quarterback's going to go ahead and throw it deep. But on this play, it was a little razzle-dazzle, double reverse. Bradford out in front gets his man, and guys, this is the way you draw it up on a blackboard. 35-yard TD 
trot for Iglesias, and here is Hartley for the point after attempt. He is 17 of 18 through the first two ball games. Takes care of business here. He tied a school record going 11 of 11 in the opener against North Texas. And the Sooners with a 7-0 lead and for their first possession. Welcome back to University of Oklahoma. The Lord Family Memorial Stadium as the Sooners jump out to a 7-0 lead. And the scoring drive, if you want to call it that, how about that? Four plays, quickly 65 yards, and an average, you know, that I guess Kelly would say, well, that's even below my average, but that's still pretty good production. Well, that's, uh, Glacius is the 10th Oklahoma Center to score this year. That's amazing through three games, and it's also a first possession score for the third consecutive game, similar to 2000. National championship season that I can remember building. They used to score on the first possession all the time and they didn't have injuries and they haven't had them so far this year. What a way to set a tone. Oh my, talking about a tone setter. What a hit by Lewis Baker that time as Baker leveled Aaron Lasway of the Utah State Aggies. Lewis Baker is one of the best special teams players that's been in Oklahoma for many, many years. He is a sprinter. He's not heavy, but he is stout. Listen. Those are the kind of hits that the team loves when they get together to watch the replays. That'll grade out pretty well. <laughs> well, they talk about moving the kickoff to the 30, and it creates more collisions, and we certainly don't wish injuries, but it is fun to watch those big hits. And first and 10, and the Aggies will again keep it on the ground. Curtis Lofton makes the tackle on the play as Curtis Marsh gets the carry, the freshman out of Simi Valley, California. He originally went to Naval Academy Prep School and then signed in December, so he had the advantage of spring football, but he's a true freshman at Utah State. He's kind of the big play guy, and then they'll pound it inside with, with Lasway. See the Aggies uh, trail in the series 3-0. That even dates back to, I think, your era, Mr. Blevins. It, it might be the black and white television. You put a hurt on him in your day here. This pass is complete to Atkinson, and he has the first down. Move the chains out across the 32-yard line. There's some of that athleticism from Leon Jackson. That is not an easy ball to throw. He isn't turned up a great deal but you really want to be. He's moving more side to side, and the receiver is not completely open, so that, that took some talent. Jackson is a guy that uh, they think will adapt well to what Daryl Dickey is trying to run, and they'll have a lot of different packages, use a lot of different players and formations, to try to tone that aggressive OU defense down. And the ball on the ground this time, and Marsh finds a seam. He picks up five or six across the 35 to nearly the 38-yard line. I'll tell you what, if Wolf hadn't have made that tackle, let you catch the right leg. And if he doesn't catch this tackle right here, I mean, that could have gone for a long distance, if not the whole way. And for the Aggies now, well, second and reasonable, and that's one thing Daryl Dickey and Brent Guy were telling us is that, hey, we, we've got to pick up that four or five yards on first down yeah. to have some options in our offense. Their use defense has just been throttling people. The sway, getting a measure of that here, is out to the 40-yard line. Nick Harris making the tackle. Misdirection plays and plays where a runner will actually cut back against a speedy Oklahoma defense is what has hurt them a little bit this year. They haven't been damaged too much, but uh, that has been a little bit of a problem. Oklahoma. This is third and short because of that first down pickup you mentioned. Well, that Miami game, the Sooners uh, it looked tight for a while, 21-13, and then they get 30 unanswered to just dominate a Miami team that we don't know how good they are, but certainly much better talent than what they'd seen the week before against North Texas. Jackson, the keeper, diving for the first down marker. See where they spot the football very close as Baker was on the chase. I don't think they're going to give it to him. That looked really close, and if it's not a first down, it's only because of the speed, again, of Lewis Baker, the linebacker. Now, he only weighs about 210, 215. They couldn't, they couldn't get him to gain weight. They had him drinking every shake, eating ice cream, doing everything he could to gain weight and he just couldn't do it. Looked like this was marked a little bit shy. 
I think Brent Guy is is going to play it close to the vest today and try to extend this game. And not a surprise here that even though it's just inches that he decides to punt. And you do have to be careful on the Oklahoma side because when the quarterback is the punter, you show something a little funky. They're certainly not afraid to take advantage of it. And Jackson's boot to Smith, and he fields it on the fair catch at the 20-yard line, and that's where Oklahoma will get possession with its 7-0 Sooners thanks to Iglesias' 35-yard TD trap. Oklahoma with a 7-0 lead, and the Sooners getting the football back, this time on their 20-yard line after the opening possession. Aggies had a little success offensively, and now the Sooners will have to drive 80 yards. That was not a problem on their first possession as they went 65 very quickly in less than a minute. Sam Bradford, the quarterback. Patrick, the tailback, and he'll get his first tote. Alan Patrick missed the opener with a sprained ankle, came back last week, picked up 47 yards on seven carries. Brindley made the tackle from the strong safety spot. Well, the offensive line has been terrific for Oklahoma, and this time the box is not loaded, so Bradford goes with the run, and that's big. That's a big hole. Patrick is terrific as an inside runner, able to pick his way, but also not afraid of contact. Second down and two. Kelly and Iglesias wide right for Oklahoma. Iglesias, Kelly trying to get a block on the defender, shoved him right into Iglesias, and a loss on the play for Oklahoma. That would have been a lateral anyway, and I was looking for a receiver to go downfield. There was no one to go back there. This was a play that probably should have been checked out of. Sooners have run this type of play so much, but, you know, actually Kelly misses that block, but I don't think it mattered, Bill. Nice play by Davon Hall, who made the stop there for the Aggies, and it makes it a third and eight situation for Oklahoma. The Sooners this year, 57% on third down conversions through the first two ball games. See what they do here on a third and eight. Patrick in the backfield alongside Bradford now goes out. And Bradford for Iglesias, he's got it at the 30 yard line. Brindley made the tackle. Bradford's accuracy is uncanny. I mean, there were so many question marks about this kick coming in before the season started. And that's an NFL pass there. 48 yards on the pass play, and Bradford continues to just absolutely play about as well as you could ask for a guy's first experience at this level. Like against Miami, he had pressure coming a few times. That one he knew was coming, but still he was able to hang in there and throw. Patrick. Power game. Bulls across the 30, down to the 27. Dean played the position of quarterback. What impresses you most about Bradford, considering his lack of experience? Well, I think it's his calmness. Uh, he is a, um, a type B personality. I've always said that type A personalities, you don't see those guys as being great, great quarterbacks. He's a type B personality, very calm. His teammates really like him. And by being calm and by being a four-point student, both in high school and college, he's very smart and able to process and make good decisions. Second down and seven for Oklahoma. Bradford, fake to the flat. Kelly puts six more on the board. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Taylor trying to make the tackle, but Malcolm Kelly gets his sixth touchdown in this just the third game. Well, this is another, this is a, a post, I mean, a corner post, and a great move on the outside. There was space, but again, what a terrific throw from Bradford. Bradford's done a great job of finding the man-to-man -man coverage, and when he finds it, he goes straight to number four. Bradford's ninth TD toss of the year. Hartley, two of two today in the PAT department in Oklahoma. Two possessions, two touchdowns, 14-0, 6.47 to go first. 
All right, watch number four right out here. He's going to take it right down here. He was going to take it to the corner and then a post. It's a great thrown ball, or excuse me, it's a great route, but then watch what the quarterback does. It has to go both ways. Terrific route, throw, catch, and no incompletions, I believe, again for Bradford, who set a school record by completing 22 consecutive games, adding, I think, 18 from the first game and the first four of the second. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, you were talking about what impresses you about Sam Bradford. We asked offensive coordinator Kevin Wilson that very question, and he said, you know what, Sam's not only intelligent, he's got a quick mind. He's used to competitive situations. He played AAU basketball this summer. He's a great athlete. However, they did not know how he would react in game situations when the pressure was actually on. I would say now at nine touchdowns and no interceptions later, they're feeling pretty good about the way he's reacted. Five of five for 105 in the score. Thank you, Emily. And uh, Sam Bradford and the Sooners living up to that high billing of that number three national ranking. And they'll kick it off again. The sway comes up, takes it on about the six. Straight forward across the 20 to near the 23 yard line. And that's where the Aggies will get it on this first and 10 on their third possession of the day. Utah State did a nice job on their last possession of picking up the first down, getting the long punt, pinning Oklahoma back inside the 20 and gaining that field position that we mentioned that Brent Guy was trying to, to establish. He, he was looking for turnovers, looking to establish some offense, move the chain some, and then play field position. So far, there have not been any turnovers to work this way. Yeah, I know, but and even though they've line. had a decent field position, Oklahoma has just run right back at them. First to 10 at the 23. Robinson comes in motion. They hand it off to Marsh. Not much doing. And Dean, you would think if there's a time when a team's going to quickly get out of its game plan, Utah State might hit that here. It, instead of saying, hey, it's 14 nothing." You still got to do what we do, right? Yeah, I don't think that they will do that because of Daryl Dickey's had some experience. That's a good block right there. That's a terrific block up front. Spencer Johnson getting a guy who's played extremely well for Oklahoma, Austin English, number 33. Johnson is a redshirt freshman, 6'5", 283 out of Lancaster, California. Second down and eight. With a block like that, you only pick up two yards. Just show, tells you how stout that Oklahoma defense is in a timeout as Leon Jackson the third, the Aggie quarterback, timeout. wants to talk it over. We'll keep it right here with Oklahoma in control. The Sooners at 2-0 and and headed up the turnpike to play Tulsa next week. And obviously they weren't overlooking this one here today. You know, let's take a, we love to throw in flashbacks. Let's see if this is black and white or color. It's still color. It's my partner today, Dean Blevins at the quarterback position. How much fun was it to pitch it to Billy Sims? Well, about as much fun as it was to pick, pitch it to Joe Washington <laughs> and to a couple of others. Steve Rhodes, is that who that is on the reception? I believe so. Yeah, you bet. Well, those were fun days. And Elvis Peacock. Yeah, Elvis, one of the, uh, I can't, I wouldn't say the first of the really big, really fast backs because Billy Vessels back here was a big, strong guy who could really fly, but uh, Elvis was special. You don't ever tire of looking at those highlights, do you? <laughs> no, I need to get a copy of that. Uh, pass. Well, you brought the DVD to the truck today. I mean, what are you talking about? We're just taking care of business hey, here. Some people will believe that. <laughs> Second down at eight here for Utah State now. Jackson to Robinson. And he squirms his way across near the 30-yard line where Corey Bennett is there. And even on that plane, it looked like it developed pretty good, Dean, but OU's pursuit was terrific. Well, that's what the difference is in a really good defense and a great defense. You think about some of the uh, USC defenses, uh, Oklahoma defenses, Miami defenses under Jimmy Johnson. There could be a play that looked like it was going to go for huge yardage, but yet it would be stopped for 10 yards. And uh, that's what Oklahoma does defensively now. Robinson goes wide left. Now comes back behind the quarterback, has it on the pitch in the back, and that did not work. English was there, among others, and a loss on the play for the Aggies of Utah State. That one looked better than it turned out. Oklahoma had a sense of what was going on, but really more than anything, it stayed at home. 
And Austin English is a guy with a fast motor. He was a high school track star, and he really has burst on the scene. He's a good-sized guy from Canadian Texas with a really quick first step. He can disrupt a run, and uh, just all around, he's a solid player. Sophomore's done an outstanding job starting off the season. Speaking of outstanding, how about this boot from Jackson? And Smith feels it on the 22 and backpedaling in trouble still. And the Aggies get out of a hole with a great punt from Leon Jackson, the third. Goodness gracious, Oklahoma will have the football and have to earn it again as uh, a 51-yard punt, minus two on the return. You got to like quarterbacks who stay on the field and punt. You don't see That's that a very rarity, much. isn't it? Yeah. How about Bradford? Goodness, what a day. It was Bradford, redshirt freshman from Putnam City North High School in the Oklahoma City area, and his counterpart, Jackson, has not had that kind of success, but thank goodness he's got a good leg for the Aggies. And Oklahoma handing it off and spinning. This is Murray. He's at the 40, 45. Down to the 40-yard line, make it the 38 of the Aggies. Singleton or the Murphy making the tackle for Utah State. Well, this is just a great example of being able to pick your hole on the inside to have great, great balance. Does a pirouette the way Adrian Peterson did a couple of times in his career, and he'll be kicking himself as this play will be called holding, back. Holding on the offense. 72, a 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That is George Duke Robinson nullifying a 43-yard return or the play, and they'll bring it all the way back inside the 10-yard line now. Wow. Well, that's a killer play. It, maybe not necessarily in this game, but you can't have that, and Certainly, uh, Marco Murray won't like that because that's probably the best run he's had. But Oklahoma has such a distinct advantage in terms of size. We'll give you those numbers in a minute. Eldred sets up on the left, and OU comes right back to the running game. And the Sooners need to get to the 29 for the first down. And Hall makes the tackle on that play. Sooners offensive line does a good job moving down the line, opening a seam as once again the running back cuts back. And the Sooners up front, talking about the size, 6'4 and a half, 311, Bill, is the average size of the Oklahoma starters. Chris Brown getting his first carry of the day on that play, and Oklahoma comes right back to Brown. Brown motors across the 35, first down at the 36 yard line, and Brown. Sophomore out of Alexandria, Louisiana, was suspended for the season opener. His first action last week, 42 yards against Miami. Uh, Bob Stoops tells me that he thinks this guy could start for almost anyone, and he thinks he's as good as he has in his backfield. And you can see the secondary having to make all the tackles for the Aggies, and that's never good. Sooners are out of that hole now, and Bradford wants to go to the air again. Wide open, Iglesias, midfield. Move the chains again to the 49 of Utah State as Joaquin Iglesias, a junior out of Colleen, Texas, scored earlier. Is tackled by Jake Hutton, the Aggie captain at middle linebacker. 15 yards on the pickup. What a beautiful day for football here. 77 degrees at kickoff. The cool front came through the other night and just gorgeous. First to 10 at the 49, looking pretty for Oklahoma as well. Play action is Bradford. Again to Finley, and Joe John Finley picks it to the 31 yard line of Utah State. The senior out of Arlington, Texas, gets his third reception of the season. Murphy and Hutton to tackle. Joe John Flip Finley flexed out. Almost a wide receiver himself, one of the three Oklahoma tight ends who plays a lot. That's not an easy throw right there. Sooners doing a great job with their tight ends. Some of these throws aren't easy. That's seven for seven for Bradford, who already has 138 yards in the air. 
we mentioned he went 18 straight to end the North Texas game. The first four completed to start the Miami game to set a new Oklahoma record that was set by Jason White. Flag thrown here. Now he starts off on fire in this game as well. You know, some people nationally have thrown out Heisman in Bradford's name. Is that even fair at this point? Oh, no as good way. as he's been? Offside on the defense, number 46. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. I mean, I don't know that we should be talking about anyone for Heisman. Yeah. I remember 10, 15 years ago, Bill, you and I were doing a show many years ago, and we were griping about the fact that, you know, after uh, halfway through the season, they were bringing up this Heisman deal. Well, maybe that tells you how long it's been since we've been together. <laughs> but now they're talking about it, you know, in the summer. No, I mean, two games. A terrific-looking player, but two what games. What a play. Yeah. Following the penalty, first and five for the Sooners at the 26. Bradford, great protection once again. He finds Iglesias. No place to dance this time, though. And he is stopped after picking up a cup from the 22-yard line. And we'll send it down to Emily. And out in a crowd like that. But uh, one guy does, Phil Lodeholt, who is 6'8", 350 pounds. He is the tallest football player on record at OU. So it's hard to stand out amongst that group, but Phil Lodeholt does a pretty good job. Not a bad name to go along with that uh, physical That's description, right. huh? Seems to fit. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. As Merck Murray carries to the 20 and has the first down. Now, that weight she gave, was that before the pregame meal? <laughs> <laughs> this this guy is kind of amazing. Good look at him there. L look how slim he looks. He, he, he does not look like, uh, gosh, what position would you put him at? Maybe a defensive end when you see a guy like that. And 352, 6'8". Yes, he is a low and not a lot of fat on him. First to 10 of the 20. Good feet on him, too. Bradford. Being chased, scampers out of bounds. Singleton had him on the run for the Aggies. Singleton with eight tackles so far this season. Bill, uh, you got to really respect Bradford's decision making. I mean, this is only a pickup of, well, they're going to mark it at about five or six yards. But his receiver's not open. Great coverage downfield. But instead of forcing the ball or throwing just simply an incompletion, he picks up the five or six and puts it in a great position for a play caller. And as we get inside a minute to the first quarter, 215 yards of offense for Oklahoma. Wow. And Brown, with a flag being thrown, moves it to the 11-yard line. Chris Brown, the ball carrier. Clock stops at 47 seconds. Position for a holding call where that flag went down. Paul Igboli had made the tackle for the Aggies. Holding, holding on the offense, number 74. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Gene, you know, Oklahoma's averaged seven and a half penalties for 55 yards the first two games. That might be one of the few things that I guess any coach would say, hey, we can get better at, huh? Well, and the running backs, uh, and I guess one right wide receiver put it on the ground. They put it on the ground three times, and Stoops and Kale Gundy, the running backs coach, they've done a great job of uh, protecting the football throughout the years. So that would be the other thing. So it makes it second and 15 from the 25-yard line. Kelly and Johnson wide left for Bradford. He looks that way, comes back to Murray, and the screen had no chance to develop as the Yankees sniffed that out well, and he is tackled at the 27-yard line. The goalie leading the way for Utah State. Utah State offensively has averaged 257 yards. Defensively, they've been giving up 341. That's not too bad, though. Now, Mark Johnson has him in a pretty solid position. And, you know, Brent Guy, that's the end of the first quarter. We'll talk a little bit more about their defense. And Brent Guy is a defensive guy, so he brings that mentality to the Aggies. Well, Oklahoma and Bob Stoops got to be pleased overall. It's a 14-0 lead after the first quarter here in Norman. With the Sooners firmly in control and trying to march toward a third score. We'll be right back with more.
Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. The third ranked Sooners on top of Utah State. 14 to nothing at the end of one. Pleased to be joined by the men's basketball coach here at Oklahoma, Jeff Capel, your second season. How are things going? Things are going great. We uh, Our team took a preseason trip to Canada. Had a great trip. Uh, won four games over there. Great bonding experience for us. Uh, the Big 12 is tough enough as it is, but your non-conference schedule is pretty stout as well. You got UNC, uh, USC rather, in there. Uh, Gonzaga, West Virginia. You, yeah, I mean, it, you guys are making it easy on yourself, are you? Yeah, you know, don't add Carolina. We don't want them either. <laughs> but we do have a very challenging schedule, but we think it will help us get prepared for Big 12 play. You talked about the uh, exhibition tournament in Vancouver. You had a couple freshmen lead the way. Blake Griffin, Kate Davis. Just talk about the addition of those two guys to your team. Well, we're really excited about our young guys. Uh, Blake averaged 19 and 10 over there. Obviously really talented. One of the highest ranked guys to join the Sooner program in a while. Kay Davis we think is going to be a very good player for us. We're excited about them. But we're also really excited about our returning guys coming back. I know a lot of guys are, or a lot of people are wondering also too about the status of a couple of your guards. Austin Johnson and uh, Tony Crocker. How are they? They're great. They're back working out now. We could have taken them and you know we could have taken AJ and played them over in Canada. But just as a precautionary we chose not to. Touchdown for the Sooner. All right. Well, you think you're going to be able to, is your team going to be able to average as many points as the football team? That, that might be the question. I hope so. We couldn't last year. <laughs> Hopefully we can. Our football team is great. I think we're going to be playing in our late January. Coach Cable, best of luck. I mean, maybe we need to do an interview with you every quarter. Know, right? Sooner's <laughs> Appreciate your time, guys. Send it back up to you. All right. Thank you, Emily. You could do one with uh, every possession, and you'll get burned with a touchdown. Is <laughs> Oklahoma. Once again, the length of the field, and Bradford is 11 of 11 for 167 yards. That time he connected back-to-back -back plays with Joe John Finley for the touchdown. And the Sooners start the second quarter the way they started the game with an opening possession and a score, and it's now 21-0 Oklahoma. Another strike for Bradford. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. It is now 21 to nothing with just now uh, 28 seconds left, uh, 28 seconds past rather in the second quarter. Now joined by women's head coach Sherry Cole. Coach Cole, how are things going for you so far? Getting ready for the season? Good so far, particularly well when our football team starts off like this. Absolutely. You guys uh, always have it tough in the Big 12, but you're not starting uh, any any easier in the non-conference, starting things off with Maryland and Tennessee. The strategy there? We just thought we'd find out a little bit about our young team. We'll have no seniors this year. We play both games on neutral floors, but still back-to-back -back respective national champions. You do bring back Courtney Paris. Everyone knows what she can do. How big is her role this year, especially since you don't have any seniors? Well, it's huge, obviously. I mean, uh, Courtney is in, inarguably the best player in America. Just as she's playing with the Olympic team right now, and she's definitely the anchor for what we do. Everything we do goes through her and around her. So uh, her leadership will be called upon definitely this season with no seniors. How do you think the Olympic team will help her in that regard? Oh, I think it's already helped her in her perspective, in the way she views herself. I think it helps her be a better teammate. She's always been uh, the lead guy, and now she's trying to make the Olympic team, and it helps her understand maybe her teammates a little bit better. And I think it expands the versatility of her game as well. Speaking of leadership, you're about to begin a two-year term, or have already begun a two-year term as the president of the Coaches Association. Uh, what are you hoping to get accomplished there? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't know what I did to deserve that. No, it, it's, been, it's been wonderful so far. It really has. Uh, to be involved with some of the great minds in the game and to be able to impact the future of our game. And I really think it's a very special time to be involved with women's basketball. Sherry Cole, best of luck this season. We appreciate your time today. All right, guys, send it back up to you. All right, thank you, Emily. And thanks to Coach Cole. As Chase McCormick is the new quarterback for the Aggies, their possession starting on the 30-yard line following the kick return. Chase out of Layton, Utah. He's 6'1", 190, a sophomore. And he is 23 years old, returned from a mission, redshirted in 05, did not get on the field in 06. So we'll see what he's got to offer here. Second and eight. Robinson behind it. McCormick looking for help, locks it, and it is incomplete. Intended for Otis Nelson, the wideout junior from West Valley City, Utah. Good pressure. Ryan Reynolds getting in on Jace McCormick, who is trying to get him a little playing time. Don't believe 
Jackson went down to any injury. <laughs> 240 to 31. That's all that needs to be said. Impressive. Third down and eight. And Oklahoma comes through with the blitz and the loss on the play. As the Sooners, Ryan Reynolds, I don't think anybody touched the sophomore from Las Vegas. Now, there was a bust by the Aggies, and Reynolds goes in untouched. And he is such a sure tackler that if you don't get a helmet on him, he's going to make you pay for it. Second sack of the season for Reynolds. The guy's a five-time national judo champion. So I don't know what all skills you have to have in doing that, but uh, you have to have more than Bill and I have right now. Reggie Smith, the high catch, and then the tackle at the 33, maybe 34-yard line. That's where Oklahoma will take over with it all OU, 21-0 here in Norman. Oklahoma 21, Utah State 0. Bill Land, Dee Blevins, Emily Jones with you here in Norman as the Sooners have it first and 10 at the 34-yard line. Alan Patrick, the tailback, and uh, the shotgun next to Sam Bradford. Hands it off to Patrick here. Escapes one tackler. Got something out of nothing that time as he pushes it out to the 39-yard line where Caleb Taylor, the free safety, made the stop. You know, you can call this bad tackling, but it might be just good running because that's what's happened to almost everyone who's tried to tackle this guy for now a couple of years because, Bill, you remember when Adrian Peterson went down last time? Yeah, look at the Trent Williams is uh, perhaps the most athletic, athletic up there of the guys in the offensive line. Second and five. And again, Patrick, speed, then power. Your point about when Peterson went down last year on Patrick coming in? Well, you know, a lot of people think that there was not much of a letdown at all. I mean, who, who can't respect what Adrian Peterson did? But at the same time, you've got to appreciate what this guy did. Now, the offensive line, again, you have to appreciate what they're doing. I mean, Trent Williams, that's two plays in a row, number 71. You can't grade out any higher than that. So Oklahoma has about uh, eight or nine offensive linemen that keep rotating in because their depth is just tremendous up front. Patrick, last year, 761 yards rushing in that role behind Peterson and then replacing him when he was hurt. Bradford again throwing. Oh, my goodness, what happened? An incompletion. <laughs> Oklahoma fans, blood pressure will go up. I didn't hear him booing, did you? <laughs> well, yeah, well, that, that's that too. Get that but, other guy in there. Yeah, but, you know, he threw it where he could get away with throwing it. But others have been absolutely perfect. That one to Iglesias. This is another one for a touchdown to Kelly. So they haven't been all just completely easy throws. That time Murphy had a little pressure on him. It's second down and 10 at the 48-yard line. Patrick. Cross to the 48 of Utah State. Kevin Wilson, I think, is doing a terrific job this year of play calling as the offensive coordinator. I mean, it's easy to do when you have the weapons that he has. But if I could see my monitor, I'd circle it for you. He has a little mustache, and he's kind of a what guy on the left. Okay, there he is. We've got some sun coming in up here. But he's doing a terrific job. Yeah, and done a great job of keeping Bradford in the right spot. This one deflected and then picked off by Utah State, so they get a break as the interception is made by Roy Hurst, a junior from Oakland, California, gets his first pick of the season, and the Aggies, with the turnover, get the football back. And Bradford's first interception of his career. Josh Heupel there talking to the quarterback as he comes off, telling him what he shouldn't have done, and that's one of the first times he could tell a guy what he shouldn't have done, but he kind of forces this one, or really more than forces it, it's, it's a poor throw. So we'll see now what the Aggies do with it, having some good field position as well at the 41-yard line of Utah State. 
McCormick again, the quarterback. Fakes the handoff. Upended near midfield, shy of the first down, but give him nine yards on the carry for Jason McCormick, stopped by Lindy Holmes. I like what Utah State has in their package. They're out athleted, but what you see right there, Austin English, number 33, bit on that one, and there was huge daylight for the quarterback. Well, as you take a look at Utah State coaches on the sideline, one of the things that Brent Guy liked about Daryl Dickey was he said, we've got similar philosophies offensively. They knew each other, they played against each other when Daryl was at K-State. Whether when Darryl, yeah, Darryl was at K-State and Guy at Oklahoma State. And this time, Fisher better get out of the way as the ball carrier's tackle after getting the first down. English making the tackle. But as you know, Dean, so important, you also had a guy as your offensive coordinator who's been a head coach. Yeah, exactly. Quarterback doing a nice job right here, McCormick. He knows he has second and short. That's a great play calling situation, but he didn't want to take the sack. He cuts it under and picks up the first. First to 10 at the 46 of OU. Turban in the backfield. And ball carrier Marsh is stopped at the 44 yard line as Curtis Lofton makes the stop. They've got something nice going around here. Daryl Dickey uh, is a guy who grew up in Normanville as a, a youngster. Ended up playing at Kansas State. Has a brother, Jimmy Dickey, that I played ball with in Norman High School. And his father, Jim, coached at Oklahoma. Defensive back, 69 to 72. But Daryl has uh, was down at uh, Denton for quite a few years. Second and eight. McCormick completes it out across the 30 down to the 25 yard line and one of the better looking plays for Utah State today. Uh, this is a terrific, terrific drive for Utah State is watch up top and what will develop up there. These are not busts. Terrell Richards with the reception he picks up 20 yards. Yeah, I saved that wasn't a bust, but I think it might have been. There's Daryl Dickey up in the box, the former UNT coach, as well as uh, the son of James Dickey, or Jim Dickey, who used to be an assistant coach here at Oklahoma, and as well as the head coach at Kansas State. Time out. Time out. Utah State. The Yankees call the timeout here with 8.57 to go in this first half, trailing 21 0. We'll take a brief break with them. We'll be right back here in Norman. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners on top, 21 to nothing, with nine minutes to go in the second quarter. And I'm here with a very, very special group of kids. It's part of the Special Spectators program. And these four kids are patients, and they, they had a chance to take in a nice Oklahoma game. And this is Dylan, right? Dylan, what have you gotten to do today that's extra special? We got to go to Splash Tooth Room, and we got to go to the locker room, and we had um, had to, um, we ate, and we, um, um, I heard you guys got to wear a piece of Bob Stoops jewelry. Is this true? Yes. What was it? It was his championship ring. You got to wear his national championship ring? Yes. I have to admit, I'm pretty jealous. That's pretty cool. Well, you guys must be very good luck for the Sooners today because they are winning 21 to nothing with you guys cheering them on. Guys, they haven't had the best of luck with their help, but they are definitely good luck for OU today. Well, they've hardly needed it, although I'm sure they appreciate their participation. Thanks, Emily. It's Oklahoma. Now the defense being challenged a bit on the best drive of the day by Utah State. It came after the interception. Ryan Reynolds makes the tackle here, and it'll be a third and long we'll see where they spot the football Brent Venables a little hot under the collar during that timeout he's got his people playing a little more passionate but a lot of trap trap option a lot of motion a couple of scramble plays Daryl Dickey and his quarterback have things working well strive start on the 41 after the interception Utah State 41, third and eight at the 22 of Oklahoma now. McCormick in trouble. Got away from one, not a second time. A flag is thrown. Gonna be a face mask, doesn't it? 
I would think so, and that's what McCormick is indicating. Taylor making the tackle. Adrian, a redshirt freshman from Mansfield, Texas, there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We'll let him sort it out. Personal foul, base mask on the defense from Raiden Smith. After this, the goal line, automatic first step. To see Dean if it happened after he had him the first time. I don't know if he reached in as the uh, player McCormick started to get away from him or not. Well, that's a big play for Utah State. Puts them certainly in a almost six field goal position. First and 10 at the 11 yard line. And Marsh carries to near the seven yard line. Curtis Marsh stopped by Harris and Lofton. Straight up the gut. Sooner stiffening a little bit. You can hear the, the head rattling way up here. Also hear the fans getting nervous. Shut out. Wait a minute. Can't lose this. It has been so dominating that Utah State a chance to try to get on the board here. Second and six from the seven out of the shotgun and McCormick looking for anything and nothing but a wall of crimson and green coming at him. Led by English, Austin English. You know, I know that they have kind of had Oklahoma off balance here with their play calling, but watch number 33 at the defensive end position. You really aren't going to run around him, and he's strong enough to work through blockers. In other words, he's going to be a heck of a player. You can tell he is young. He's a sophomore out of Cana Canadian, but he has big time tools. They lost six, and it's now third and 12 from the 13 for Utah State. McCormick with a pump fake. Jump ball and Reggie Smith knocked it away from the intended receiver Nandi Guachum. Harris also there. And a flag is thrown. Nick Harris making the play. Holding on the offense number 63. Yeah, I don't know that uh, letting them have the play over really does you much good because still in pretty good field position or excuse me field goal range and leaving open the possibility of a big play. Nick Harris the number five who broke up that play is a terrific football player. 6'3", 236 junior. He's all star caliber. Peter Caldwell is a three of four on the season sets up at the 20 for a 30 yarder. Jackson the holder the kick is good and Utah State takes advantage of the turnover this started after the first interception that Bradford has thrown for Oklahoma and Taylor with the pick and then the Aggies end up getting three out of it it's 21 three nice little birthday gift there for Caldwell as he turns 19 today 10 plays 46 yards stalls for the field goal let's send it down to Emily Jones. There is a parade of OU head coaches on the sidelines. Here is another one, Patty Gasso, the head softball coach. Coach, you had one of your most successful seasons in school history, 55 and 8. You finished in the top 10, but I understand you were disappointed. <laughs> Slightly. I was very proud of the team. I think we overexcelled. I don't think anyone thought we would end up where we did, but we were number one for four weeks. But what does that get you in the end if you're not at the College World Series? So. That's what we were disappointed, but very proud of our efforts and our record and winning a Big 12 tournament and uh, just just very proud of what we put out there. Last year. And you've got three All-Americans coming back from last year's team. How exciting is that? I know you've begun practices as well. Yeah. It's been great, exciting, new blood. Yes, I have good leaders coming back, very talented athletes. So I think we'll be as good, if not better, than we were last year. So I'm looking forward to it. Right, Best of luck this season. We do appreciate it. And congratulations on a great year. Thanks. Back up to you. And Galilee, Reggie Smith takes the kick return out to the 31 yard line. And Oklahoma will operate there. A return of 29 yards. Dean, we haven't really talked a lot about Oklahoma's special teams, but with the kicking of Hartley and then their return game, both punt and kickoff, 
That's another big edge this team has. Well, Iglesias, particularly running back kickoffs, has been really good. Reggie Smith came in last year and even the year before as a phenomenal return guy. He really hasn't been what he was uh, when he came in since then, you know, but, but uh, overall they are outstanding. And speed is the answer in virtually every category on special teams. Patrick showing his speed here. Watch out. Can they catch him? 30. They will not. Alan Patrick to the house. 69 yards. Well, I started, started to say that I think Oklahoma is going to run the football this possession and go score. I think that was correct, but I sure didn't anticipate a hole like this opening up and on one play going the distance. And Patrick didn't have to do a bunch except make the last tackler avoid him. Longest run of his career for Patrick, 69 yards and a TD. And that'll bump that average up a little bit on the day as you look at six for 98. And Patrick coming in and averaging 6.7 a carry. So you do the math. It's beyond us. <laughs> beyond most people, you try to figure the numbers of this Oklahoma team. Hartley's kick is again good. And so Utah State says, all right, we get an interception. Hey, we got on the board. Now let's go and see if we get the ball back. Well, you do, but you didn't want to do it that way. Well, again, here's a, a look at the blocking. And we've mentioned a couple of times that that's as good as you could draw up on a blackboard. And that one is. By the time you get to the second and the third quarter, particularly the fourth, if other teams don't have a lot of depth and Utah State doesn't, the Sooners just wear them down. And I don't care if Oklahoma is playing one of the better teams in the country. Generally, they have more depth than other teams. And I think maybe so this year more than any that I can recall, Bill. And the other thing about that, Bob Stoops will tell you that this team prepares well. They've really been attentive. And when you have that old coach is saying a competition for position, which they do in just about every position, it gets players to avoid that letdown because they know if they don't play particularly well, somebody's going to jump right in there and take their place. And you know, Alan Patrick, no one was doubting his ankle hurting. He said he was fine for the opener, Dean. But when you see DeMarco Murray get five touchdowns in his first game in a student uniform, your ankle's really ready to go, right? <laughs> Good point. Oklahoma will kick it off as Hartley. Robinson at the seven. Dives to near the 25 yard line. And that is where Utah State will get its next possession. Take a look at this number. You talk about you've got to be successful on first down. Oklahoma on first down today. 208 yards, 14 plays. Mm, that is just phenomenal. Everything's going to work after that. 327 total first half yards. I know the Aggies did not defend well last year. They had hopes of defending better, and I think they will as the season goes on, but they're getting licked right now. Last year they gave up 436 a game. This year at 341 through the first two, but UNLV and Wyoming are not Oklahoma as John Williams lets the quarterback know again here. John Williams a guy that has been really impressive and just hanging in there at Oklahoma. He's out of Houston. He's kind of a bookend with Dotson out of Houston. But he is a, a cousin of a lot of great great athletes. Derek Johnson formerly down at Texas. Michael Johnson the sprinter and many more. It's in his bloodlines. Second and 12 at the 23 yard line for the Aggies with 517 to go in the second quarter. And Lesway couldn't sway out of the way as he is stopped for a loss on the play. And Curtis Lofton and Lindy Holmes are there. Do you think that uh, Brent Venables had anything to do with the emotion that the Oklahoma defense is playing with on this series versus the last? Uh, yeah, I would think so. And uh, defensive coordinators, well, we see it all ways. Are they in the booth or are they on the sidelines? In his case, it fits this team for him to be down there. And it fits his personality. Yeah. I'd, I'd hate to see him up in the booth. <laughs> Take the windows out. 
third down and 12. And it's complete to Robinson. Way short of the first down, though, out near the 26-yard line and a punting situation for the Aggies of Utah State as Ryan Reynolds is there on the play. Was Brandon in the press box with Mike Stoops for a Kansas State game that was a really big one as they were winding it down at Kansas State before coming to Oklahoma? I think I've and, heard some of that. Story. Yeah, and yeah. I, I remember Mike. And if was, anybody knows Mike Stoops, uh, type A personality. <laughs> <laughs> great guy. Great guy. Great Fourth coach. And down, nine. And Shanks said it goes out of bounds on the OU sideline. I'm going to mark it at the 48 of the Aggies. So a 22-yard kick if that stands as you look at Brent Guy. Don't you play golf left-handed? I, I think I remember that. I swing left-handed. Okay. I don't know if you want to call play is, is well, what you describe by performance on the course. That, that, are we already at that level no, here in the well, second quarter? No, I was just thinking the last time we played, you had a little trouble with those pitch outs. <laughs> I think it was a shank left or two. That was like a five-iron shank from the left-footed kicker. That's why that word comes to mind so freely That's right. with me, you know. <laughs> First and 10 at the 48. Brown. And it was whistled down before he lost the football. I knew we brought out the old video of Dean, the Bill Lamb golf would then follow. See, it's, it's, it's shot for shot here. 336 and counting. Oklahoma with the ball here. And very solid performance, I think you'd have to say, in this first half for the Sooners. As they lead at 28 3, out yardage from 327 to 58 at this point. It's second and eight now. Play action as Bradford rolls left and Kelly. Dean, you mentioned his hands. Is there a better example of just anywhere within a range? Yeah. He's going to grab it. And his body language, both catching the football and then afterwards, certainly not a cocky kid whatsoever. He is one of the all-time great kids, but it is just so natural for him. He just drops the ball and comes back to the huddle. Well, there was enough zip on this to keep it from going the other way. And it moves the chains. First and 10 at the 37, Oklahoma. Brown. Good hard tackle that made defensively that time by Utah State. Good, don't you get the sense that Utah State, I mean, they've given up the, the home run ball, but, I mean, they have done some good things defensively. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, you look up there and you see 338 yards. It seems strange to say that. You can see hope for the Aggies out of this. Going against one of the nation's best teams. Second and ten. And out of bounds. We'll mark it where the 30, a little short of the first down as Zaslaw, the receiver. Dane, a senior from Edmond, Oklahoma, had his first career touchdown against Miami. Zaslaw coming out of the backfield, and it's a check down because that's an easy throw and could have, should have been a first down, but still it's third and short, and it'll be four down position. Matt Clapp, as good a fullback as they have, is being redshirted. He should come back next year and be the guy. Third and two. Bradford trying to lay it out there in just a little too much that time. Is he trying to connect with... Eldridge. Brody nearly had it. That was there for the taking. Maybe he got his tight ends confused and it wasn't Gresham who's the 6'6 and uh, has a spurt. That's a rare miss by Bradford, but a lot of quarterbacks when they miss a pass would just love to have it that close. But that was one that uh, the Sooners let get away. Josh Heupel, outstanding quarterback in his own right. His day here now. Coaching him, and it is fourth and two. 13 of 16 is what Bradford is on the day. Throws it again here and complete for the first down. And Oklahoma moves the chains. Iglesias quickly steps out of bounds with 149 remaining. You know, I think it's a sign of a, a great offense that you can just make some things look so easy. A lot of teams can get in a fourth and two, and in this position, they would actually kick a field goal, attempt a field goal, but. Oklahoma doesn't hesitate, uh, certainly in this situation they don't hesitate, but they make it they make, make it look so comfortable. First and 10 at the 23, they'd like to milk that clock all the way here. 
Iglesias comes back to get the football, dances on the sideline before stepping out, picked up a few more yards inside the 15-yard line. Joaquin Iglesias opened the season with seven receptions for 128 yards, got his first TD of the season on the first possession here today. Well, Iglesias, as you can see, is a well-built guy, six feet, 202, only a junior high school. He was really good in everything, including track. But uh, you can tell he is a strong athlete. Oklahoma, second down and one to go. Bradford, just off the fingertips of Finn. It's pretty well defended. And the only place that you could throw it for your man to reach it was in that area. It could have been completed, but that was well defended. Bradford and Finley, don't turn your back, even if you're security. <laughs> Hopefully everybody all right. Third and one now at the 14. Clock stopped on the incompletion, 137 to go. Marco Murray may be licking his chops right here. Upended at the 12 or 13 yard line. Taylor making the tackle. The score for you, Dean. Iowa State beat Iowa today. Oh, uh, really? 15 to 13. Who'd have thunk that? After Iowa deal. State getting thumped by Northern Iowa. Who else was it that beat them before that? And they beat Iowa today. Was in Ames. Hey, the Big 12. That's right. Big Scratch 12. it down. <laughs> Put it on the Big 10. First and 10 here for Oklahoma. And Bradford is brought down on the play. As the clock's still moving. And a timeout will be called here by Oklahoma. Second sack of the season. As this is just good overall defense. I think that was a load hold at the top of your screen being beaten. Bradford didn't quite feel it in time, and he goes down. Calderwood, the second team all-conference pick out of the WAC last year. We had 44 tackles. Smithfield, Utah, Skyview High School. Well, the Big 12 looking its wounds, and Iowa State helping after Oklahoma State getting pounded last night down at Troy and certainly has them scratching their heads as they've got Texas Tech coming to Stillwater for the conference opener next weekend. Here it's Oklahoma taking care of business and trying to tack on another TD with 110 to go in the half, leading 28 to three, second down and 15 to go. Kelly wide left. Bradford. Found him, touchdown Kelly, making it look so easy. Malcolm Kelly gets the TD, his second of the day, his seventh of the season. Well, I hate to say I told you so, but I was pointing out to you yeah. that man coverage, and you just can't do that. You've got to have some help from the safety. But Oklahoma occupies the safety with an underneath route. And that is beautiful execution. Grant for missing on a couple of throws he wishes he had back, but that one more than making up for it. Bradford gets his third touchdown pass of the afternoon with 105 to go. Hartley kick is up and good. And the Sooners make it a 35 to three ball game here with 105 to go. Talking about blackboard sessions protection no one within four yards of the quarterback and Kelly just turns around the defender and that is um, it'll be a lot tougher next year if he goes next year to the NFL or the year after the coverage will be a lot tighter than that and probably a lot tighter down in the Cotton Bowl but nonetheless great execution by the Sooners on offense Kelly's seventh touchdown of the season as Oklahoma 11 plays 48 yards cap it off that drive with a TD pass and Bradford 16 of 19 six of those to Kelly Bradford's thrown for 216 three scores and one interception so far.
Utah State back for the kickoff here. 105 to go in the half. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, Emily Jones with you as the Sooners in control of this one as they were expected to do. But when you see scores that we we're just talking about a moment ago, you don't take anything for granted. And a team, once again so far, has shown they're ready to play on a day when you thought they may overlook them for a bit, but they have not. And the sway to the 30, 40, dives out of bounds, and at the 47 yard line. Nice return by Aaron Lasway. Captain. Pardon me, Bill, but, but watch Hartley here. Is, uh, looks like he's going to walk away okay, but this one he kicks low. He's had a little bit of a, 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 I think he's had a little bit of a groin problem, and not only did he hurt himself on the kick, but then he has to come over and cover. At least slow things up there. Now that won't be good for the Sooners who rely on him for a lot, and that was really terrible coverage by Oklahoma who lost contain. Well, we'll see what the Aggies come up with. McCormick somehow found a hole for a few yards, and boy, did he pay for it. The football's loose, and Oklahoma's got it. Boy, there was a hit by number wow. 40, Lofton, who hits about as hard as anyone in college football. And Alonzo Dotson then recovered the football. Dotson, the senior from Houston, took advantage of the big hit from Lofton. Play disrupted at the line of scrimmage, and the collision is huge. Look at Dotson. Look what that came into my lap. I, I think that that uh, will stay with Utah State. All right, they're gonna. Rule it down. They're huddling down there right now. Oklahoma may get it, but I don't know that the return will count. Play in a review. Hard to see when the ball pops up. There's maybe a better angle. See Reynolds is number eight going in. His helmet may have been part of that. And then Dotson is right in his lap. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a fumble and recovery by Oklahoma. First down. All right, OU gets it back, Dean. What do you do? 47 seconds to go up 35 to three. This is the part that coaches don't want to have to plan for, but you do have to plan for it when you've got an opponent thumped. Let's listen back to this play a second first though. <laughs> Brent Guy would tell you, you go for a score because in the Cotton Bowl, you may have this. That's right. Go. And oh, you look in that direction, it's overthrown. Intended for Kelly. Good coverage back there that time. Bradford had just hooked up with it. I don't know if he didn't see Kelly, if he saw the, the safety come over from the other side and thought that he might be in position for it, or if it was just a bad throw, but it might have been one that he threw long on purpose, thinking that if Kelly could get it, great, but if no one was going to get it, that would be fine, too, because the clock stopped in second down. Second and 10. Second and 10, 41 seconds to go. Ball at the 48 of the Sooners. Finley sets up on the left now. Bradford got hammered, but got it off in time, and Iglesias will move it for a first down to the 34-yard line of Utah State on the reception. Bradford stood tall with a defender coming right at him. He has a stronger arm than a lot of people felt. It's hit from the backside. Watch him pop back up, though. He does a good job of that, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage because the clock is about to start. Poor throw there. That hit was by Davon Hall, and now the incompletion. Bradford trying to go to Kelly again. And it'll be second down at 10 with the clock stopped and 28 seconds now remaining in this first half. Now, Bill, to expound on my thought there about what Brent would say is you go get it. First of all, it's 35 to three and it, you're in the first half. I say unless it's 80, 
you know, an 80-point difference in the first half, you still go get it. But you've got to let your guys play. They've worked too hard for these situations. Bradford. And again, complete first down, I believe so. We'll see where they mark it near the 25-yard line. Looks like to be a little shy. Iglesias again on the reception. Joshua Taylor covering. Boy, this was just a great reception from Iglesias. A nice route here. And he keeps that left foot in inbounds, and, and, and you got to go back to the quarterback, though. Great job of moving his feet, buying some time, and his, his body doesn't always, he, he keeps his body in such a great position because of being a great athlete. He makes it look so natural. Oklahoma, 401 yards of offense now. Brown cuts right through and goes down to the 15, and that'll be a first down. 15 seconds on the clock as they move the chains. Bradford will hush, hustle them up so they will not waste a timeout here. If he doesn't get it in pretty soon, he's going to have to down the ball and not waste the timeout. Clock is running down it. That's what you should do in that situation. There's the look at it now. The timeout is now, called by Oklahoma. He lost seven there's, seconds. There's why you do it, Bill. Yep. You know, why, why do you have the team go in and try to score instead of downing the ball? Well, that's a mistake, yep. and you learn through mistakes. Say, that, all right, if this happens a few weeks from now down in Dallas, <laughs> right, you don't lose those seven seconds because you've been here before. That wasn't Bradford. That wasn't the offense's fault. It looked like it was the play call not getting in from up top. Yeah, because they had time with the chains being moved and the clock being stopped momentarily to get that in and obviously didn't want to have to burn that time out. That's why being a play, play caller is not that easy. You always have to be at least one play ahead of yourself. If you're going to run the football, you really have to know your options. So Oklahoma now with no timeouts. First and ten. That's not the issue. Eight seconds remaining is. Got to go in the end zone. Kelly and Johnson wide left. Bradford go. coming back to the right and incomplete. And I got three seconds left as Hartley will come on for a field goal attempt. So Utah State, after the turnover, at least stiffens here to yeah. not allow the touchdown. A chance to see if Hartley is healthy from that uh, last kickoff where it looked like he was strained a little. One of one, a 30 yard field goal on his only other attempt this season. And this one right around 32. The problem with that kick, and his reaction seems to be okay as Oklahoma picks up three more on the final play of the first half on Hartley's field goal, and it's 38-3 to Oklahoma at the half here in Norman. And the Sooners, very impressive. Certainly some things to talk about, but overall, how do you argue with a 412-yard performance and 38 points? Let's go down to Emily Jones with Coach Stoops. Points. Pleased with their performance so far? Uh, I am. You know, we take care of the football. That's a big factor. We had the one interception that was tipped, but uh, but they are. We're running and throwing it well. Defensively, only allowing a field goal. What what improvements can they make? Well, not allow a field goal. We had the one driver. They got they got good field position off the turnover, but um, you know we we gave a few plays, but they're they're playing well. It's been pretty solid. All right, coach. Best of luck in the second half. Uh, Bill, it looks like the Sooners are well on their way to uh, eclipsing the 50-point mark for the third straight week. We'll see how they play in the second half. Back up to you. Well, they're averaging 65, so uh, they have work to do. But it's 38-3 to with the Sooners on top here at the half in a convincing way over Utah State. To Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium in Norman, where the Sooners lead it comfortably, 38-3. Over the Aggies from Utah State, Bill Land along with Dean Blevins, and how would you grade this performance? Well, you know, based on the first two games, you look at it and you're kind of disappointed because they had the turnover and, uh, you know, you give up a field goal that you don't expect to give up. But at the same time, Bill, I mean, what are the expectations? You know, that, that's the thing you have to keep in mind around a place like this. Uh, it was outstanding.
it was outstanding and uh, Bradford missed a few passes but he's human and uh, you don't hand a guy Heisman just yet so okay all right let's take a look <laughs> at some of the highlights they did it running and throwing and it started with a little deception well Oklahoma comes out and goes 65 yards on four plays and this was quick they had a free play coming because of all sides from Utah State but Iglesias got into the end zone quite easily in the passing game to Kelly, the first of his two scores. That made it 14, and then they come back on an 81-yard drive, 10 plays, 21 yards, terrific passing, and this is when the streak was going on, and this guy, Alan Patrick, takes it the distance. This was after the field goal from Utah State, and the Sooners came back and didn't want it to take long. And then again through the air, and again to Malcolm Kelly. And Oklahoma with a field goal tacked on, leading it 38 to 3. The yardage you see there that is circled 412 to 62. Bradford's passing percentage, his completion percentage has dropped today as uh, he's gone from 83.3 to 80.6%. <laughs> That's what kind of things you're dealing with. You talk about expectations because you also had an interception for the first time this year. Well, I don't know how long Bradford and some of the other frontline players would play here in this ball game. I think that Oklahoma would like to extend this score out, go out and play clean, a clean third quarter, and maybe even before that quarter's out, maybe we will see Nickel, the true freshman, get in. Halsley's the other quarterback, and maybe some other players on the team. But I think that they would like to make sure these guys are fresh because they play next Friday night in Tulsa. And Utah State would obviously want to see a stop to that, see if they can get things going in the second half. We'll be back with that when we come back here in Norman. Oklahoma leading 38-3. to Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage on FSN. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners on top of Utah State, 38 to 3 with 9.45 to play in the third quarter. Our tour of OU head coaches continues with the volleyball coach, Santiago Restrepo. How'd I do? Yes, that was perfect. Okay, thank you. And speaking of, you, you guys were darn near perfect last season. Two years ago, this team had only seven wins. Last year, only six losses. A pretty incredible turnaround for this program. That is definitely incredible. And that's a tribute to the dedication and the work ethic that a volleyball players have you guys are off to a great start again this year nine and two including a win this morning over Kansas and a win last week at Texas A&M who is ranked number 25 in the country what do you like about this year's team oh I, I love this year's team I think the chemistry is great uh, we have eight new players uh, in and eight returners and uh, we have a program called the Big Sister Little Sisters, and they're all taking care of each other's mind. They're doing a great job so far. And only two starters back from last year, so you're getting it done with you. Yes, uh, only two starters, you know, but we have also a lot of experience, okay, and done a pretty good job from last year. Too. Okay, now you, you can join Jeff Cable as Good Luck Charms, because Jeff Cable, I was interviewing him earlier, Sooner scored a touchdown, now you scored <laughs> They scored a touchdown when you're talking. That's, uh, you and Jeff Cable, good luck for the Sooners, I guess. That's the good luck charm that we have. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll do another interview a little bit later, and we'll see if the Sooners score again. All right. Thank you, Emily. 92 yards for DeMarco Murray. And unbelievable. This guy, this is why people are so excited. Didn't you say the home run threat? Well, you know, he has the home run threat ability. He has track speed. He's up to 205. He's gained about 20 pounds since he got here. He's now carried it four times for 100 yards. And, uh, Bill, he was also, some people say he was the one of the top 30 high school basketball players in the country. Yeah, no, no, outstanding basketball talent. And Hartley comes on for the point after. It is good. And Oklahoma with 8.59 to go in the third quarter. Now on top, 45 to 3. Murray with a 92 yarder. <laughs> Oklahoma 45 to 3 after the third longest run in school history. A 92 yarder from DeMarco Murray. And Oklahoma with 541 yards of offense. 286 running, 255 passing. And they'll kick it off to the Aggies of Utah State. And you know, the Aggies, they get that quick kick. You pin Oklahoma down, you're saying, all right, stop them here. We'll get the ball back near midfield. Finally, play a little field position. 
Murray just gives you a weapon that not much defense for. Take a look at that play in a minute. Robinson on the return at the 20, turning it. And he is wrestled out of bounds on the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at this touchdown, and you can almost see where it was going, Dean. Well, Oklahoma has a three tight end set that they bring in quite a bit, and watch them just mush them here. But you got to look at the offensive line as well. They do their job, and DeMarco Murray does a nice job in cutting back right here, and he'll cut it back to his left and put on the afterburners because it looked like he was going to be run down. But you've got to give total credit to that offensive line. I could have gone through that hole. Now, I couldn't you have finished gained, the run, you would have but gained. I could have gone through the hole. Yeah. It's an 11-yard run. That's, That's right. right. Here's DeMarco. He's been timed at 4.3 in the 40. Also a 41-inch vertical jump. A tremendous athlete. Pass play here on the first down offering and complete to Xavier Bowman, sophomore from Houston, and a penalty is thrown, penalty flag. I think we're going to have offensive holding, but Oklahoma not covering as well in the second half here for the late, late second and early holding, third. Holding on the offense. 84,403, the official attendance here today at Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Brett Guy discusses that one with the official. And it'll be a first and 20 for the Aggies. Oklahoma in their nickel look, number 11, who was covering there. Lindy Holmes is the fifth defensive back. Darian Williams, 41, playing safety. And complete and out of bounds is Nelson Smith stopping him. Pick up a few, and he's still second and long. Good job getting the ball out there very quickly. Reggie Smith closes on this very fast. Reggie came in, and some people questioned whether he was going to be physical enough to play corner. Well, Deion Sanders wasn't the most physical guy in the world, but he has really become a a nice aggressive defensive back a cover corner par excellence and that time he closed very well and didn't give up much it's a second and 14. from the 27 yard line for the aggies we've got 60 rushing passing and 25 rushing is all they've totaled here today this one out to the 30 yard line where it'll be third and 10. lofton makes the tackle for oklahoma you know, one of the reasons that Oklahoma plays so well defensively is we, we have a better job than you do sitting at home of watching how these players are coached. But defensively, these guys are coached on every play, every every grouping is. And Brent Venables coaches this game like it's the Texas game, like it's any game. It doesn't matter if it's Utah State or any other game. They're all the same to him. Third and 11 for Leon Jackson, the third out of the gun. They come after him, and he completes it to Nelson, who is close to a first down and should have it just past the 41-yard line. So Nelson, the flag is thrown. Nelson had not made a reception holding, holding, coming in here. Oklahoma lucky. Yep. 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. Tell you what, Bobby Jack Wright is going to have some tape to show his guys. Brent Guy disgusted that that wipes away a some field position is one of his thoughts because that's what he was trying to do today. Obviously, that helps in trying to run some clock here. But anyway, Marcus Walker was not in position to make the tackle quickly, Bill, and to force a punt. Bobby Jack. Third and 21, though. A penalty, huge, obviously, is uh, instead of first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Now you got that Oklahoma defense gearing up and the crowd probably raise it a bit too. Three wide outs to the right side for Jackson on third and 21 from the 20. And completes this one to the 32 and diving out of bounds. Omar Sawyer, a sophomore from Ogden, Utah, on the reception. And another penalty flag. Boy, Brent Guy will go nuts if this goes against Utah State, and I think it will again. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul. 
the 17 of the offense. It'll be 15 yards to the end of the run, fourth down. Well, that, that is Bowman. Yeah, that is mm. so frustrating because you get yourself out of a hole. Still didn't pick up the first down, but still get yourself out of a hole and, and then the penalty, and now you have to punt it. Well, the Yankees, they're looking forward, and they go home to meet Utah's for the San Jose State next week, and then they go on the road at Utah at Hawaii, and Hawaii, a top 25 team. So, got a heavy road schedule to start their season. I want to carry some type of momentum. Here is Smith on the return from the 48. And Reggie across the 40 to the 39 yard line for Oklahoma. Great field position for the Sooners after the punt from Jackson. Oklahoma with a 45 to 3 lead, 727 to go in the third quarter. And Sam Bradford apparently is done for the day as Bradford on the sidelines after another superlative performance, 19 to 26, 255, three scores, his first interception of the season. And that means Keith Nickel, a freshman from Lowell, Michigan, comes on with Oklahoma first and 10 on the 39. Hands it off to Patrick. And Alan Patrick. Brought down near the 33, 34 yard line. So starting to say that this is a great opportunity for Nickel because you want to go in with the first team. And you want to have good field position, but then I saw the flag come out and, you know, you kind of lose that. But um, a lot of it is about, I mean, it is in life, it's about opportunity, you know, right place, right time. And Nickel, the true freshman, highly touted coming in last spring. Uh, that's so important, Bill, as the second guy coming in to be put in the position to succeed. Nickel did not play last week, did against North Texas, threw one, ran one. And a guy that people have talked a lot about his talent abilities gives him a chance to showcase him a little bit here. Hands off to Brown on a first and 20. Chris has tripped up about the 47 yard line. So third or their second and long now coming up for Oklahoma. Derek Cumbie, junior linebacker from Andrew, South Carolina made the tackle. Keith Nickel has a ton of promise. He's 6'2", 204. He's a true freshman from Lowell, Michigan, where he was the two-time Michigan player of the year, the late commander of the Second and 18, Grisham moves, sets to the right side now. Nickel fires it to Cheney, and he muscles his way near the 35-yard line. Quentin Cheney. He is a 6'4, 213 pounder out of Tulsa from Booker T. Washington. Nickel is the best runner and he has the strongest arm and he has tremendous upside. So, you know, you say all that and then there's Bradford, <laughs> you know, who's, who's high. But, you know, he is just a terrific player. But here's a guy that, uh, you know, has a lot of skill. Third and seven for the Sooners. Nickel. Going deep. Incomplete. Nearly had it. As he went very well covered, but certainly a catchable ball for Garrett Bolton. Garrett did not quite turn on the afterburners because that looked to be a perfectly thrown ball. Well, that was a yep. perfectly thrown yep. ball. The wicket says Hartley will set up now. The line of scrimmage is the 31. So we knew a 48-yard field goal attempt and a 40. This will be a 50, 50, 50, 53, I beg your pardon. As he sets up on the 43-yard line. 53-yard attempt by Hartley. And with that leg, it is good. Garrett Hartley from South Lake, Texas. 53-yarder. That is a career best. His previous best was 52 a couple of years ago. Hartley's kickballs over 60 yards in scrimmages this year in uh, driving rain, and he's gained 25 pounds from when he came in. He's at 205 and not real tall, about 5'8", but a very, very strong leg, which obviously looks healthy right now. 
All right, as Hartley hits Pats on the back for that career best 53 yarder, we'll send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, I don't think, I think that. I think the streak's going to be broken as far as head coaches being interviewed when the Sooners score a touchdown, <laughs> unless something miraculous happened. But we are joined by Mark Williams, the head men's gymnastics coach here at Oklahoma, and also Jonathan Horton. And we'll start with you, Coach. Seven national championships this team has won. What are you looking for coming up in this 08 season? Well, Jonathan Horton's one of the best gymnasts in the country right now, just coming off the world championships where he's fourth in the all-around. So I think he can lead us to another national championship this year. That, not, no pressure, right, Jonathan? It, it seems like you're well on your way to uh, earning a spot on the Olympic team. What was the process like? I know you get, just got back from Germany, as Coach mentioned, uh, competing in the World Championships. And how forward are you looking for the Olympics? Uh, you know, the, the Olympics is something that you know I've always dreamed about going to. And uh, you know, the process and the training and everything is you know every day. So you know, it's. You have to be very motivated mentally and physically, and, you know, it, it's tough every day, but you have to, you know, it's nice to be pushed by your team, by your coach, and, uh, you know, it's great to be here at OU competing, and, uh, you know, there's nothing greater to help somebody make it, you know, to the Olympics, ma make that dream come true. And, Coach, I know that Oklahoma, obviously well-known for football, they've packed the stadium here, but I know you have a very large following, and it's also good to see how supportive head coaches and the entire OU community is of all the sport. Right. It's almost like a family. The athletic department is very close, and, you know, we put on put pressure on each other to do well. You know, if uh, softball wins a championship, you know, we want to go out and follow in their footsteps and do well as well. So, you know, nothing better than the football program to set a great tradition that we need to follow. All right, Coach, thanks so much for your time. Best of luck and good luck in the 08 season. Jonathan, good luck, and we'll be looking for you at the Olympics. Thank you. All right, guys, send it back up to you. Thanks, Emily, and best of luck to all of the athletes and coaches that Emily's had the opportunity to talk to today. A great group here at the University of Oklahoma. Utah State down by 45 with two of the four, five, 35 to go in the third and second and 10. The situation from their own 20-yard line. Ron Jackson the third. And takes it forward across the 24. Now that's the kind of play that usually buzz for a big play because it was a unless it was a really strangely designed play by Daryl Dickey, that was a bust. Watch the quarterback. Yeah. He doesn't panic. He's got no one to fake it to or hand it to, so he holds on, sees a hole up the middle, and still third and six. I think it worked because he didn't panic, and it's almost like, what's that? The defense almost stopped, like, we didn't hand it to anybody. <laughs> Daryl. Well, and he's got a couple of youngsters out there, redshirt freshman Dervin Spite, as well as Robert Turbin, a freshman, both in that backfield with him, so there was a little bit of confusion. Brent Guy let him talk it over here on before a third and six play. And, uh, you know, Darrell, I knew him uh, when he was a kid growing up and uh, his father real well and didn't see him a whole lot, but I, he, he really struggled through about a nine month period last year. He had a gallbladder removed, he uh, diagnosed with diabetes, he had a heart attack, uh, and then he got fired. And all that was within a period of uh, nine or 10 months. Yeah, he said, I wish I could have taken a red shirt year <laughs> from coaching yet. Uh, they named the practice field after him in Denton, and he said, and I don't even get to go on in. <laughs> He's got a terrific attitude, and glad to see his health is uh, certainly a much better shape here, and he's really enjoying the opportunity to work under uh, Brent Guy uh, and call the plays out at Utah State. Brent says, we're lucky to have a guy who's got Division I coaching experience uh, as our offensive coordinator. Vigilant head coaching experience, I should say. Jackson drilled that pass to Robinson. Robinson came in 10th in career receptions and yardage and 6th in touchdowns on the Utah State Aggie career charts. He gets 13 yards on that pickup. Kevin Robinson, a senior from Fresno. Very good execution here. And, and Daryl is finding some spots in that Oklahoma defense where if it's executed properly, Receiver will have a few yards and the ball's thrown well and both of those things happen. Came in their leading receiver at 8 for 122 and one touchdown. Did not scored a TD today. It's 48-3. Not much happening on that play as Lofton puts a stop to it all. You know, I'm not sure. I don't think we have seen 
one of Oklahoma's best defensive players, Gerald McCoy, number 93. I haven't seen. He was the National Player of the Year, or national top defensive lineman coming out of high school out of Oklahoma City. And he broke a hand, Bill, last week. And I think that uh, that could be the reason we haven't seen him. Yeah, he's been through a lot of tough times here recently. And, and they yeah. expected he might be able to play. But then again, we're not sure. But they might have just held him out once they had control of the game and not have to use him here today. Interception, Lofton. He'll score unless one man can get him. No. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Curtis Lofton with the INT and the TD. Well, Lofton is known for spending a lot of time in the film room. Bill, that looked like a play that he sniffed out. And he showed a lot of athleticism on that, didn't he? Because he's up to around 250 pounds. He didn't motor like it. <laughs> Well, we saw Brent Venables chewing on him uh, after that fourth and one quick kick. I don't know what that was about, but probably going back. Is that good enough, coach? <laughs> Does that make up for it? And the point after by Hartley. And no good. This is his second of the season. And the Sooners lead it 54 to 3 with 4.09 to go in the third quarter. Nice break on the ball, and that's a ball that is difficult to catch, and it's also difficult to keep your balance. And Lofton out of Kingfisher does a great job of both. You know, Hartley now has missed the two extra points, as you mentioned, and, you know, he's sitting there going, man, I'm a, I'm a grozer guy, and then I should be a finalist and maybe win this thing. He's that good. A lot of it has to do with the execution, the snap and the hold, and I don't think that that one was perfect. Well, and the other thing is that even when you grade that, particularly this year, with the kickoffs being moved back to the 30, those touchbacks and those type of things and your net distance and all of that stuff, I think is going to make a big play because uh, it's going to be a lot more than just how would you do in your field goals and your extra points, don't you think? Well, absolutely. He had kicked six out of, I think, 21 kicks out of the end zone coming into this ball game and he's kicked a couple out here two or three and he, he says that uh, he could kick more out sometimes they kick it high to certain players to keep giving good opportunities or a ball like that well that one gets through the Utah State men but uh, that one should have been picked up and so there are different things you do on the kickoff he is a huge weapon for Oklahoma 45 yards officially on that return for the TD by Lofton and Oklahoma will set up their defense now at the 20 as that one kind of knuckled on him a little bit floated and danced through the end zone first and 10 at the 20 for Utah State. Go, go. Go, the Aggies will bring Leon Jackson the third back on the quarterback three wideouts to the left. Hand it off to Marsh, the freshman tailback. It's a yard or two. John Williams, a senior out of Houston, makes the stop for Oklahoma. Second down and eight. Can you talk a little bit about the depth? And some people see somebody like Williams, way he's a starter. Well, the way they rotate guys defensively, it's a little bit different deal here, right? Well, they, they're playing three or really four defensive ends. They stick with their linebackers for the most part. But the, one of the luxuries that uh, Oklahoma has this year is that, and in most years, because everything starts with run defense. You gotta have stuff at the back end. You really have to have stuff at linebacker, a little bit everywhere, but you really gotta have those down linemen. And the Sooners have guys they rotate in with Corey Bennett, uh, Marcus Granger and uh, Stephen Coleman and Gerald McCoy and even Taylor getting in there. They're all fresh. There is McCoy. We were talking about earlier that broken hand. You see it bandaged up. It's third down and six now for the Aggies at the 24. Jackson 
in trouble, hit as he fires, and it goes out of bounds on the OU sideline. Good pressure as uh, Darian Williams was coming on. Leon Jackson, the third out of Long Beach, California, has had a tough day with that Oklahoma pressure. Pressure gets after him and Darian Williams on the back end, as you mentioned, number 41. And you, you kind of feel sorry for a guy like Williams because. Yeah, just guys get through there on the left. They just uh, they couldn't hold up. But Darian Williams is a guy who they had tons of hope for and has played really well here at Oklahoma. But he had a little bit of an off-season injury, and all of a sudden the guys that get in front of him, he has trouble finding playing time. And the return by Dominique Franks brings it near the 47-yard line after Jackson's punt. Jackson passing wise, nine of 14 for 65 yards against the stout OU defense that is held. The Aggies to 131 yards of offense here with 239 to go in the third. Well, Oklahoma with uh, Sam Bradford's performance today. Different quarterbacks have led them to each of their championships, and who knows what will follow for Bradford, but Heifel, Hibble, White, and Thompson. And one of the things Bob Stoops is proud of that whoever's back there, they adjust, and here is Brown getting the handoff from Nickel. And he rolls for a first down carry. Takes it down near the 37 yard line. And Dean, for our Utah viewers, may not be aware, it was a three headed deal, right? To start with this year, quarterback and Nickel, Joey Halsey, the junior college transfer, and Sam Bradford. And the decision was made about a week and a half before the opener. And Bob Stoops said everybody wanted to know who's going to be, who's going to be. He goes, the competition was so good. He goes, I wasn't trying to tease people. It was that difficult to make a decision. It tells you how good these guys are. Yeah, it, it really does because uh, I know I know Nickel has a ton of upside. And he's good at this type of thing. He's good at getting out on the run. That is a bad pass there, but. Uh, he is really a threat. Joey Halsley, you know, you talk about Sam Bradford leading the nation with pass efficiency. The only guy he's behind is Joey Halsley. <laughs> you know, he has a better number, but doesn't have enough numbers. Well, Halsley's just five of six for 100 yards in the TD. He had one last week against the Miami when it was two of two. And there he is, number 15. He's from Huntington Beach, California. But it's Nichols' opportunity now with 2.08 to go in the third, second and 10, the ball on the 37. Moses Madu, the tailback, doesn't get an opportunity as they jump the gun. It looked like uh, Cumby coming across the line. They're number five. And sort out the laundry once again. Look at this. Oops. Guys have to really be gambling. You have to really feel like you're tuned in to do something like that. I didn't believe it's defense, but I've never understood why that happened. Well, and it's not like they knew his cadence. This is about his fifth play. <laughs> Second down to five. And a loose football. Aggie saying they've got it, and they do. Utah State will on pile with a football. And Nick Royster, Nathan Royster, number 94, got a congrats from head coach Brent Guy. Wow. Like well, Wiley had taken off early. Well, the defender jumps and the quarterback jumps. That's the thing you can't do. And, you know, that's the thing about a guy that hasn't had many snaps. That time, Nickel pulled out. And just because a defensive guy flinches, you cannot flinch. So the Aggies get it back first and 10, their own 32 yard line. And McCormick is back in as the quarterback. And nothing happening. Reynolds just hog ties and brings down the running back as Durbin Spite, 5'9, 201 redshirt freshman. No opportunity thanks to the play of Reynolds. He's had a, quite a game here today. He has. I uh, don't think he knocked down a shoulder. It looks like uh, he's a little bit uh, banged up, and he has been banged up during his career. He's really, he's really bothered. It looks like. Staying on for the moment. Second and twelve for Utah State. 
McCormick in trouble. Goes right up the middle and then dives over as Nick Harris hit him low. And no mark his progress at the 38 yard line. Guys, Oklahoma had this one covered so well. They had the pressure from the middle initially and then on both flanks. But then the gap in the middle opened up. And that's a nice move by McCormick. He was able to. He didn't see anything on the outside to the left, didn't go to the right, didn't risk the throw. Put it up inside for a few. Third and four. McCormick. And it is complete, but shy of the first down. Maybe fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage and uh, Reynolds make the tackle. Let's go down to Emma. Well, guys, Jason McCormick is playing in his first college game in three and a half years. He signed with Utah State, then went on a two year Mormon mission, came back red shirted, and got his first playing time today. Daryl Dickey told him this week, I'll put you in the game in the fourth or fifth series, unless you make me mad, then I'm going to start you. I guess he didn't make him mad. <laughs> He's 23 years old, so uh, many of these players, of course, on Mormon missions, that uh, it, it becomes an old team, even if it's not experienced. And a hold up here, we'll find out. They sorted up with just four seconds to go in the quarter. It's fourth and five. Blakeman, I think he just wanted a little more TV time, make sure everybody saw him there. We identified him, the referee. <laughs> so that is the end of the third quarter. Oklahoma led in 14 zip after one, 38 3 at the half, and now 54 3 after three in Norman. It's been quite a show by the Sooners, Bradford, and crew. We'll be back. Oklahoma entering the fourth quarter in control 54 to 3 over Utah State and on a fourth and five from the Aggie 37 Utah State set to punt it with the quarterback Jackson back there he stands on his own 22 Dominique Franks to return he is on the 20 about the 19 escapes one Franks to the 30 got a little wall cuts it back 45 50 and out of bounds on the Utah State 45-yard line. Again, there you see that depth for Oklahoma in all phases of the game as Dominic Franks nicely done. Dominic Franks gets his shot back there. Reggie Smith has just been worn out because Oklahoma has forced so many punts early this year, and he's done a great job of fielding kicks. I don't know that he's gotten as many yards as Bob Stoops would like. So they're looking at him and they looked at DeMarco Murray earlier on a kick. 36 yard return of a 43 yard punt that time by Franks and here is Nickel and crew now and hands this one off and this is Madhu across to the 32 yard line maybe the 31 or just Madhu the 5'11 freshman from here in Norman the fans love him too as Odong made the tackle. Yeah Madhu a really good kid and here it'll be blocked well but Madhu has the ability to bounce outside and he's played on this field before Norman High School used to play all their games here but they don't anymore but they do play their skirmish between um, inner city rival Norman North here. Well, 14 yards on that carry. He had came in with 13 for 99, 7.6 per carry. Had that 55 yarder in a TD. First and 10. Nickel and Cheney couldn't find a handle there as that ball was drilled to him. Well, there's an example of why it can be difficult to be the backup quarterback. I mean, I, I, I know that uh, if this ball goes to number four, Malcolm Kelly's going to catch it easily and he'll probably score a touchdown. But uh, Cheney, who's never really quite lived up to his billing, um, not only that score, you can see some footsteps there. He drops the football. Second and ten at the 31, and the handoff to Manu again gets to the 29-yard line. Cumbie makes the stop. 
What's your thought as the Big 12 gets closer to conference play on what we've seen so far a couple weeks of non-conference play? And folks didn't hear Iowa State yeah. knocking off Iowa today. Oklahoma State got pounded last night by Troy. Well, the let's watch this one. Third and eight. Nickel with a high snap handles it. And then looking for Tennell and couldn't quite connect there. Part of the problem there was it was it was a high snap. It threw him off rhythm, and he threw a poor ball. But again, Bill, that's an example of not having a, you know, a guy who's going to give you a good snap. I mean, there's just so many things that can go wrong, and the kid has had a, a few things mess up on him in Oklahoma at Tulsa this next, next coming week, and then uh, at Colorado before the big one down in Dallas. The Sooners won't be back home for that Missouri game October 13th, about a month from now. Fourth down and eight. This one a little bit behind Cheney, got a hand on it, and falls in complete near the 20 yard line. Even though there are some excuses for the quarterback here, it might show that uh, Bradford's a pretty good player, huh? Yeah, I think so. His three TD performance proved that again today. We'll be back in a moment. Oklahoma fans and cheerleaders, a lot to cheer about today with the Sooners 54 3 leaders over Utah State. Number three national ranking. Looking more and more legit, certainly by today's performance. Put it to a lesser opponent. And Utah State running it here on a first and 10 from the 29 yard line. It's McCormick keeping the football. Third defensive end, Jeremy Beal in. And I know Bob Stoops was pleased in one of the earlier games this season when some of the backups got in and played well, but this is the time of game where things can get sloppy and Oklahoma will want the backups to stay fundamentally solid and play good technique. Veal, redshirt freshman out of Carrollton, Texas, second and six from the 33. Not much doing that time for Durbin Spite as he stopped by Lewis Baker. You know, you were asking about the Big 12 Conference, and clearly it hasn't been what it's been in the past this year or last year. Still, Oklahoma and Texas, we'll see what Nebraska does tonight, are teams who can play with anyone. And if those two, three teams can be really good this year, that makes up for a lot of the bottom feeders, and there are several bottom feeders, it looks right now. McCormick, oh, took a beating that time as a couple of defenders converged on him and he paid for those precious yards. Yeah, the only problem with that, and you really don't know it as a defensive guy, Bill, but the quarterbacks running north and south, and in this case, north, and you know, he, he's hit well behind the marker. He wasn't gonna make a first down, but he's getting, he gets hit so hard from behind that actually the, the defender pushes him far enough to make the first down. Daryl Moore is one that made the stop first and ten as he mentioned now and he's in trouble again and goes down as hovering over him Lindy Holmes the junior out of Dallas Texas also Beal was there Lindy you get a tackle for loss if you just kind of get to him before he gets on the ground you get credit <laughs> looks good in the stat sheet high snap gave him no chance Second and 16 from the 34 yard line. And again, the Aggies quarterback McCormick. Davis just missing on the diving attempt. Beal slammed into him as he released the football. And Oklahoma's really turned up the heat. Well, Oklahoma, they talk championships here. And if you take a look back at the tradition of Oklahoma in the modern era, the wins. The percentage and weeks of number one. That's that, pretty stout. Right that's there. pretty amazing. And well. shows that bottom number two <laughs> of seven national titles and a couple of near misses in the last few years. And certainly uh, they're being mentioned. And whether that's fair or not, that's the talk. 
with this year with the uh, LSU and Southern Cal. Most people put OU near that caliber. Third and 13. Wow, another big hit as McCormick paying dearly for keeping the football. And Robinson made the tackle that time. Lamont Robinson. You know, the one guy who's not getting in is Mike Reed at linebacker yet. And here you see the speed of the backups. And that's one thing the coaches, I think, had mentioned to you was that when you look at Oklahoma, you yeah. will see speed. Utah State, we talked to the two coordinators and, of course, Brent Guy, and each coach individually you said, what sticks out? It was recording. Speed, speed, speed. I mean, everywhere, offense, defense, special teams, bench, everything. The fourth and 14, the punt to Franks. Steps back to the 12. Cuts right up the middle, the 30. Franks again, a flag is thrown, 45. And tackled out near midfield as Dominique Franks. You know, it's amazing. This may very well be a, a block in the back, but there's an official on the 15-yard line. He was about 10 yards to the left of the block. And this flag came in about five seconds later from midfield. But Marcus Walker there, 24, called for a block in the back, and it comes all the way back. During the return, return, return illegal block in the back, back gets the return to the 24. It's half a distance penalty to the goal line, first down. Bob Stoops letting Walker, the senior out of Waco, Texas, know what he thinks. Bobby Jack right there. That nullifies a 36-yard return by Franks. Doesn't matter in a game like this. Will matter in a game later down the year. You can't have those mistakes, and that was unneeded anyway. He, was, he didn't need that block. But it doesn't nullify Frank's impact on the coaching staff wondering yeah. who their return guy is going to be. Well, good point. Very good point. Stay with us. Timeout call with 9-14 remaining. All Oklahoma. Oklahoma 54, Utah State 3 is clock at 9.14 here in the fourth quarter. And that young Sooner fan hadn't lost any interest. <laughs> as Oklahoma will have it first and 10 from their seven to start this possession. Nickel hands it off to Madhu, trying to get a little running room to the outside. Utah State able to hang with them this time as Cumbie leading the way. Also, Daryl Fields in on the tackle, 47. Corey Brandon. Rob Moore, Brian Simmons, a bunch of guys in there. Some of them are good enough to be starters, but there's several guys in there that uh, have not played very much, and you can tell a little bit of a drop off there. And again, for Oklahoma and every team with the Purdy in college football, if you suffer a key injury here, there can be a huge blow. So Sooners getting valuable experience for these backup players here. Utah State also in the same situation. The stakes a little higher for OU these days as Clark makes the tackle on the running back here. And it's out at the 10 yard line now. It'll be a third down and seven. We talked during the commercial break that uh, fans back in Logan, you can't be pleased with the scoreboard, but you have to be pleased with the continued effort from Brent Guy's bunch here today. And that may not mean much to some folks, but it should, because when you are getting whipped like that on the scoreboard, giving that kind of effort is not easy. Nickel sandwiched and hit hard, just shy of the 15 and shy of the first down. He'll look at that tape and realize, had he made his mind up and continued to go north instead of kind of hesitating, he would have picked up the first down. Much easier said than down there as a true freshman. It did come in in the spring. He competed real well for the starting job, but Bradford had already been here and gotten in a some valuable experience last year, practicing daily against an outstanding Oklahoma defense and had quite an edge. Mike Nall will have the first punt of the day for Oklahoma standing on his goal line. And he booms it. Robinson at the 39. And Spins out of two more tacklers, 45, 50. Robinson, most of his yardage side to side. Did a pretty nice job of escaping things, though. And a timeout on the field with Oklahoma. 54, Utah State 3. 
Welcome back, Oklahoma 54, Utah State 3. Those diehards stay into the finish here. Many of the 80,000 plus have headed for the exits, but Oklahoma on defense now is Utah State. Sam Bradford, who had another impressive day with three TD passes and taking a seat or stand, if it will. And right up the middle, Turbin picks up a first down to the 37 yard line. Robert, freshman out of Fremont, California. Lenny Holmes makes the tackle at the 11 yard pickup. This is where Oklahoma's defensive staff and players really want that backup bunch to preserve a shutout in terms of touchdowns. But, you know, you can only do what you can do. You can't run back in and start. First and 10 at the 37. Cormick hands to Marsh, lost the football. Oklahoma's picked it up and still on his feet for just a moment. <laughs> My goodness, why would he pick that ball up? Pretty good snag, though. Yeah, great hands that time by uh, Cordero Moore. Yeah. For 89. That was a fumble without being hit. That was one just uh, going in the bread basket. Tennis would be an unforced air. Moore, 6'2", 297, a sophomore from Mesquite Horn High School down there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and it's Oklahoma and the Sooners give Joey Halsley a shot now appears as the third of the OU quarterbacks comes on. And Aggies helping off the injured back Curtis Marsh their talented freshman and, and not a good sign you know I don't know if we mentioned earlier the Aggies without Antonio Taylor their leading tackler from last year and this year has been suspended for the rest of the season. And they also lost Ben Childs, defensive tackle with a broken leg. And depth, as you mentioned, Dean, is not a strong suit at Utah State right now. So uh, injuries just such a huge impact at every level. And here's Madhu. He's tackled near the 39 yard. Madhu doesn't have the luxury of a lot of those frontline backs of having a crack and not being hit for a few more yards downfield, but he's really a good one. Halsley coming in, and he's a guy that may lag behind the other two in the tangible department, but his intangibles are really good. Smart and leads, and there's a bunch of, bunch of really good things. It's just a matter of who's going to be, and can that guy be good enough if Bradford goes down? Second down and seven out from the 39. Halsley hands off to Madhu, spins, and there's a good point of what you were just talking about. He actually makes a pretty decent run Oh, he makes run a there. good run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing to show for it as Derek Cumbie gets the tackle. It reminded me of some Barry Sanders runs for <laughs> the Lions. Ball. Oh, Lord. And another situation where if you're the Oklahoma staff, especially if you're Joey Halsley, you say, I've been practicing way too long for you guys to call a running play here or a short pass, give you a chance to do it. And, you know, I know they're very hesitant about doing things like that. Holton and Cheney go wide left. Let's see what they do come up with on a third and 10. As Halsley, they come after him. He dumps it off, and here's Madhu. Now Madhu with a little bit of room to operate, and you see he almost has the first down. Just gives you an idea of his talent. Oklahoma Bob Stoops rarely would not go for this. Nice swing pass. Catches Madhu in stride. Makes the first man miss. Makes the second man miss. Almost gets the first down yardage. And they marked that back a little farther than I thought. I thought it was going to be near that first down marker. And I was about to say Stoops always goes for it there, but wouldn't hear and punt it. But it's a little farther back. And the punt is certainly the right thing to do. That play, though, gives Oklahoma 602 total yards of offense for the day. And they'll punt it away. No snap, and Null handles it all right. Been a bad game for Oklahoma special teams today. They have been a tremendous, tremendous unit, but not a good day today. Well, let's take a look back. We've had some flashback fun here today. And we go back to a guy who got it all going here at Oklahoma with Bud Wilkinson era back in the 50s. And David Baker, a little TD run. And next up, some Tommy McDonald to Clendon Thomas. And 
little razzle dazzle. Game ain't changed that much, has it? Well, I tell you, <laughs> Bud did, did some incredible things. Came in at 40 years of age. He retired, or, or he was the athletic director at 40. I think he left in his uh, when he was very, very young. But Bill, they won 77 straight conference games. Incredible, 77. That 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 figure. You talk about the what the 47 game winning streak. But when you talk about 77 conference games in your league, yeah, I don't care what league you're in. When you're in that where people know you best, that is an amazing accomplishment. Of course, the Sooners, with all of their hardware, yeah, they need another shelf or two, don't they, over in the Switzer Center with four Heisman's leading the way in those most prestigious of trophies. It's second and 14 for McCormick here for Utah State. Completes the pass to number 21, Spate. And Holmes making the tackle. We threw out one happy birthday to a player earlier. Got to throw one out to Merlin Olsen. Yeah, maybe the most famous of Utah State's alums, right? Ram, yeah, Rams number one pick. and. Uh, his birthday today, Hall of Famer, and he was uh, an Outland Trophy winner. The Yankees have their own tradition. Down in the Cornell Green wasn't too bad that came out of Utah State. We were talking about off the air earlier. Played basketball and football. That guy just trying to rebuild and get it going there. Here is McCormick. On the run and fires and picked off. Intended that time for Bowman, but Brian Jackson gets the INT. Brian Jackson came in a really highly recruited player. They thought that he would emerge and be one of the key players in the secondary for Oklahoma. He hasn't quite gotten there because of such stiff competition, but he still can play. That's a nice break on the ball. So Oklahoma with 235 gets it back. Jackson 6'1", uh, 190, a sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. And Halsley will be the quarterback again. First and 10 at the 35 of the Aggies. Madhu protecting the football down to the 31-yard line. Picks up four. The band is sounding bloodthirsty. They're really getting after that little. You know. They're going, hey, we're not leaving early, and if we're still playing, we want to inspire our guys to more points. Hey, they're not going to get it because they won't throw for it, I don't think. And Brent Guy asks his guys to play hard. That's the way he wants to go the rest of the year. They've done that here in the second half. Second and six. Madhu shedding tacklers. Breaks through to the 20, the 15. As soon as my partner said they won't. And again, I mean, everybody in the building pretty well knows where the ball's going, including the Utah State defense. Yeah. And look what Madhu and friends make out of that. Give him his linemen some credit, obviously, but a heck of a run for 17 yards. Yeah, it is. He cuts this one back against the grain. Stiff arm. He's already made three missing. That's why they really like this kid. I mean, he's got some potential, and, and folks, he's four on the depth chart right now. Mm. Probably isn't going up this season. Tulsa getting a preview, watching this, going, oh, wait a minute. Hurricane has Brigham Young tonight, today, before they host Oklahoma this next week. Brent Guy appreciating the class from Bob Stoops, just taking a knee right now. Headsets off, and this one is pretty much done with 102 and counting, and the Sooners 54 to 3. Kevin Wilson, we had mentioned earlier about doing such a good job. Brent Guy can't be displeased with what happened in the second half. Oklahoma led it at the half 38 to 3. Ends up with a 54-3 win. That last score, of course, Lofton's 45-yard interception return. So, and, and yeah, so you played vanilla here toward the tail end, but the Aggie effort has indeed been there. That's something they can't take away from that. And they have some players who are going to get better. And when they get back in the whack, there are some very good teams, but there's also some bottom feeders in there that they're going to have an opportunity to take care of. Third and 14 with the clock moving. 
football. And Oklahoma stays unbeaten at 3-0. A resounding 54 to 3 whipping of the Aggies of Utah State as Brett Guy gives Bob Stoops a pat on the back and a congratulations. And the Aggies dropped to 0 and 3 after losing to Wyoming and UNLV prior to this. They go home to host San Jose State next weekend, and the Sooners travel up I 44 to meet the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Sam Bradford was outstanding again today in his limited time. Three touchdown passes. OU ends up with total offense of 617. Kelly, a couple of more TD receptions. He's got seven now through three games. And the Sooners also get their third longest run from scrimmage today on a 92-yarder from Murray. And let's go down to Emily Jones with Bob Stoops. Coach, let's start with defense. I asked you, headed into halftime, how your defense could improve. You said don't allow a field goal. They didn't pitch a shutout in the second half. Please yeah, with their they, performance. They played well. You know, they, they really, uh, Coach Dickey and his offense, they do a lot of motioning and shifting, and you really got to be disciplined to, to stop all of their run games. So I was real pleased that we were able to do that. Offensively, Sam Bradford, another great outing. He does throw his first interception, which I guess it had to happen at some point, but a great day for him and his supporting cast as well. It, it was. Uh, he's, uh, you know, uh, Sam's done a great job managing his part of the offense and doing what he's asked to do, and he's getting supported by a lot of good players that are, that are making plays around him. These victories in these first three games have been so lopsided. Do you feel like, though, you're still able to learn enough about your team as you head into Big 12 play? All you try and do is play the best you can every game. So that uh, guy's... Uh, you know, they've had a great focus, a great attitude in how they're playing. So how can you complain about that? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased. We just got to keep building on it. All right, Coach. Congratulations right, on the win. Appreciate your time. Bill, send it back up to you. All right. Thanks, Emily, and thanks to Coach Stoops. Uh, Bradford, 19 of 26, 255 yards, Dean. Three touchdowns. Did uh, get picked off for the first time in his young career here. But he certainly set the tone once again today, and, and the running game was just as strong. And uh, well, we'll go back to Emily. She's got another interview. That's right, Joaquin Iglesias, first touchdown of the season. How nice was it to get in the end zone? It was good. I mean, I've been trying. Like the first game especially, I landed on like the two and the one yard line. So it, it's kind of relieving to get that first one out of the way. Everybody talks about the play of Sam Bradford, and rightfully so. He's playing so well, but coaches are so quick to point out the supporting cast, all you guys at the skill positions up front on the offensive line. Uh, what have you learned about him as a quarterback, and what have you learned about this unit as a whole? Uh, I mean, as, as for Sam, he's just he's just relaxed out there, and uh, he's making the plays that we need him to make, and he's looking good out there. And uh, as a whole, we're just clicking right now, and uh, it, it seems like everything's going right for us, and we're just going to try to carry it on every week. The, lop, the victories have been so lopsided for you guys, but do you feel like you're able to learn enough about yourselves as you head into Big 12 play, um, even though the margin of victory has been so great for you? Uh, coach, coaches always talk about just taking it week to week and just work on yourself. So uh, it, it's not really about our opponents. We feel like it's just about us, so we just try to come out there and uh, take every game and just try to get better every week, and I think we're doing that so far. All right, Joaquin, congratulations on the win. We do appreciate it. They have Tulsa next week on a short week. It'll be Friday night, Bill. All right, yeah, not much time to prepare for the Golden Hurricane, and they'll give them a whole different look than, than what they've seen, more like North Texas, but a much better ball club. Yes, and uh, they've got a quarterback in Paul Smith who played so well out here on this field a couple of years ago that uh, he has the respect of the University of Oklahoma. That game won't be a cakewalk. This one could have been a much bigger score had Sam Bradford stayed in and had Bob Stoops wanted to push one in. But that's the way you should do it. These other kids need to have a chance to play. Oklahoma, I think, Bill, got out of another game unscathed. So I think injury-wise, they're in pretty good shape. That is always a big plus. Let's send it right back down, Emily, with more interviews. Well, guys, I'm going to take a little credit for this one. I just told Curtis we talked about him in the open and I highlighted what he had done thus far this season. And he gets today his first interception return for a touchdown. How nice was it for you? Oh, uh, it was amazing. I mean, I just did my coach gave a great call, and I read my read, and he threw it right to me, so I had to score. You, you didn't buy it on the play fake, isn't that right? No, it's. I mean, when they run a split flow, I'm supposed to get to the flats, and uh, my call led me to there, and I just picked it off. Talk about just how this defense as a whole is playing. You guys have been dominant in every game you've played this season. Um, you sense something special going on? Yeah, I definitely sense something special going on. Every day we go out there and play, we're just trying to get better and push towards a uh, goal, and that's to get to a national championship. And uh, each game we play, we just got to uh, come out and execute all the players and play real hard. Talked about it a little bit earlier, a short week this week. You guys have got a Friday night game at Tulsa. It'll be your first road trip. Um, just talk about, you know, the mindset heading into that one. It's also kind of a rivalry with it being 
close and playing on the road and on a short week. Uh, maybe a little bit of adversity. You guys haven't had a whole lot of it this year. I really wouldn't call it adversity. I mean, we just got to have a, a tough mental set and go out there and be ready for anything they throw at us and be ready to play. All right, Curtis, congratulations on the win. Best of luck next week. Curtis Lofton, his first career interception return for a touchdown, guys. Thanks, Emily. And, uh, yeah, he's certainly smart enough to give credit to his coach, too, who had been chewing on him a little <laughs> bit earlier. It shows that the intelligence of these players, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I like those guys, though, who go straight to football talk. He said, I did my reads and went through my reads, and I was in the right place at the right time. They're, they're uh, focused in on what they're supposed to do. Th this guy's a really good football player. Yeah, no question about that. Congratulations to Loft and all the Sooners, and uh, good luck to Utah State down the line as the Sooners win it here 54-3. to We'll be back with a final word in just a moment. Fifty four three is the final. The third ranked Oklahoma Sooners take care of the Aggies of Utah State. We welcome you back here to the University of Oklahoma. Bill Land and Dean Blevins with you up top. And uh, Bob Stoops pretty well said it, Dean. They took care of business here today. And uh, the I don't want to use the term professionalism of this team, but that's about what they are starting to resemble. Well, it was a business uh, <laughs> venture, if you will. I was going to say business trip, but it wasn't much of a trip. But it, it was all business. Uh, you come into a game uh, favored by 46 points. You know what's supposed to happen. That's what it does happen. Oklahoma was able to do, as we mentioned real early in the game, get Bradford out and get the other guys in there. And by doing that, you get to rest your guys and you get to keep them healthy. So I think today was a good week for Oklahoma, but it was one that you could tell that they were emotionally not really as into as the other two. Well, just how good can this team be? Because I know we need to weather the competition, but 79 points against North Texas, they honestly could have had 100 if they wanted to. Last week, they throttle, I still think, a, a good athletic team in Miami. And today, they get over 600 yards in offense when they've really closed it down by middle of the third quarter. You know, I, I always say it's still too early right. to know. I, I think you have to step up and play some guys, and I think that uh, Colorado may give you resistance uh, up on the road. Oklahoma has to now get out and go on the road, as you mentioned. So I think we're going to know more then, and Tulsa will pose some problems. But then it always seems to come down to what happens in Dallas, mm -hmm. and we'll see if Texas can even get there undefeated but regardless whether they're undefeated or not that game and I've mentioned it now a half dozen times I've been there I know what it's about and Oklahoma will have to fight its uh, guts out to win it but when you take a look at things overall the Sooners certainly are on target on pace to meet all those expectations and, and those are lofty but people certainly uh, have seen what this team's capable of yeah they've got the talent uh, the, the only question coming in was Bradford you saw today what all he can do all right, and that's about all we can do for this one, folks. Hope you enjoyed it here today as the Sooners take care of Utah State 54-3, to the final. For Dean Blevins, Emily Jones, and our entire crew, this is Bill Lance saying so long from University of Oklahoma. Thanks for watching. Again, the final score, Sooners 54, Utah State 3.